Surprise, Phelps. Look at this, we have a box. I'm gonna give you one hint. It's whatever the thumbnail showed. <laughs> the second hint is it's made in China. Have we narrowed it down yet? It's also the title. And That's fly. the logo on the side of the box. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't get all the way across. So we do a lot of unboxing. What is going on there? Are you kidding me? That looks totally sweet. It's the SU27. Twin 50 millimeter. So twin 50s are nice because they aren't battery chewers, usually. Get out of my life box. So, as you can see, this beautiful thing is lightweight yet strong EPO, ABS engineered plastic. Okay, that's the material it's made of, which you probably already knew that. We can spend 750 millimeters, so it's actually not that big, geez. Mm -mm. Those would be some huge EDFs on a smaller plane. Um, okay, and motors, 26, 27, 4600 KV, uh, which is not to be confused with kilovolts, all you people out there. That means rotations, per volt, 46,000 rotations per volt. So 46,000 times however many S's, cells in series. Uh, what, is the, what does it recommend for a battery? Ah, 14.8, 2200 through 3000. So let's do that now, let's talk about charging. We need a battery. So I would probably say 2200 and 3200. So 2200 4S, and 3200 for us. If you guys haven't seen the S155 charger, we generally would use the smart charger, the S2200. I have my lanyard off because we're gonna do radio setup soon. This thing is super nice if you're uh, 4S or less because it still has the big IC5 and the IC3, which is really nice. But then the Gen 2 packs are even nicer because then you just stick them in there and they go. Okay, so that's pretty sweet. So we got those ones going. I don't even think those ones need to charge. It's like the shortest battery charging segment ever. Did you want me to go longer? No, we're good. Three to six minutes of flight time is long for a jet, guys. Okay, so this supposedly has five nine gram digital servos, uh, and it looks like throttle, ailerons, elevator, front gear. Oh, so there's no rudders. No rudders, no rudders. bummer. Well, it's not uncommon on yeah. bank and yank, um, bank and yank jets. So we're gonna we're gonna open this up. We're gonna unbox it right now. Now it does obviously it comes in two different libraries. Uh, I don't know which one we got. I'm hoping. I, I think the blue camo. Oh, good, because I think the blue camo looks cooler. Yes, we have the blue digital camo. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna lay this back here. Build time is approximately 20 minutes. Now, I must say, just the other day, we may or may not have reviewed the J65 business jet, which was amazing. And they quoted a build time on the website of less than an hour or approximately an hour. Mm -hmm. And this is really actually probably about a 30, 40 minute build time. If you're not doing it on Brian Phillips RC, if you're doing it on Brian Phillips RC, it's like seven hours. Yeah. That's a joke. Well. We can make fun of ourselves here on Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> we don't take life too seriously. Well. <laughs> Unless we get on a tangent about the federal government. And then <laughs> or the power company. Ah, oh, yes, those things too. Why do you have to bring all that crap up you at the same time? You're asking for a <laughs> montage. Hey, would you grab my nuts and bolt sacks, Ooh, please? It's very yeah. small. Ooh, wow, thanks. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> you said we could make fun of ourselves. All right, so basically what we've got here is we've got a singular nut and bolt sack. That's pretty sweet. I love that picture. It looks so cool. Backside, oh yeah, so beautiful. Now, this is not folded, but it does look like we got the commensurate somebody spilled their drink on it. So that's always <laughs> nice. Ooh, yes. I wonder what type Hopefully of drink it was. It was. Drink. Hopefully, oh, you're thinking maybe it was like, <laughs> you know, some byproducts or something? Okay, maybe I shouldn't lick my finger anymore. <laughs> Just one lick for you, finger. Hey, we do have to glue stuff. Oh, gross. I don't want to glue stuff. Well, luckily it's crazy windy. Yeah, show the people the it's wind terrible. sock. It's over there being like, it looks like we're trying to sell used tires or something here. <laughs> All right, so going back to the unbox build radio setup. Obviously, as you know, you've already seen the flight. Actually, you may not have. Maybe you're just watching the unbox in order. We've been doing this format where we release the video like a minute before. Cool, spring loaded, very simple. Feel how squishy those are. Aww. Yeah, not at all. 
Seriously, RC manufacturers, XFly, if you're listening, we want squishy ones. Just go next door to where they make the crawlers. There is a time or place for a nice firm pair well. of tires. And then there's, well, just saying, I mean, we can all have desires, but we want squishy ones on RC airplanes, okay? They taped my nose cone in. Look at this. Look at this. That I do not like because that made me nervous. Woo! Yeah. And it did take the paint off. Okay, so that is a beautiful tail, or excuse me, a nose cone. <laughs> tail cone. This is a tail cone, everybody. Okay, we're going to keep going with this unbox because it's super successful so far. Um, lots of tape, lots of different complex angles and stuff. It's going to be a pain to reload all these plugs, I can tell. If you guys didn't know what we do with our foam, we melt it and we make poor man's asphalt. We do. It does real. send a plume of s smoke to the sure International not. Space Station, <laughs> but we do it in a totally environmentally friendly way. Yep. Beautiful. Oh man, that is really gorgeous. Look how smooth it is. For being a small plane, yeah. this is super beautiful. And that wing is way smaller than I thought it was gonna be. That's like the like, wing. Like, yeah. hold on, let's just, for fun. Just for comparison. <laughs> it's like a little wing. Yeah, but that plane is way bigger that than plane I thought is, it was gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, totally. And by the way, this is, this is the type of plane that has a large wing and then it also has a fuse that acts as part of the wing, okay? Hey, did you notice how good the color match is between yes. the paint and those decals? Yes. Okay, just Look checking. Same thing here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely gorgeous. Very good. Very good, loving this, guys. And also love the fact that they made their jig to paint where it's gonna give us glue contact points. Mm -hmm. Good job, X-Fly. Beautiful, uh, actually I didn't try to twist these. Okay, so vertical stabilizers have a little bit of flex to them, not anything crazy. Um, I can't tell if there's any sort of an insert in there. It does look like there's a place to receive some sort of a pin, but I'm not sure. Okay. So we'll just keep going. Okay, another protective thingy. Okay, the other wing, absolutely gorgeous. Ah, 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 uh, you know what I just realized? No flaps. No flaps, no flaps. But you know what's fine about that on this particular plane? Because what we're gonna do for radio setup on this plane is we are most definitely going to be using an AR-631. Oh yeah. Now, so let's talk do... about this for a minute. Are you sure we are? We've Please. got throttle, mm -hmm. elevator, Rudder, no, steerable, still steerable. Oh. Ailerons, which would be, oh, so that's really only a four. Throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons. And what am I missing? No flaps, no gear. Safe, on, off, which we can actually use the upper channels for that. Master gain. So I think we should be able to do flap rounds. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we're gonna do flap rounds, I think. So we'll show you how to set that up. And when I say flaperons, I mean both ailerons act as flaps and then they continue to function as ailerons and they return to their flat position when you're not giving aileron input, okay? So that's cool on an inboard aileron like this because this is, this is inboard, so it's toward the, toward the vehicle. And then this would be outboard. So I believe on a real one, there would be flaps, but I, I don't know that for a fact on the SU-27. So. That's one thing I've noticed about X-Fly is that they don't necessarily defer to flaps on every plane. Now, this is a smaller plane, you know, probably don't need flaps, but I have found that on jets, especially jets, you get the CG back a little bit further. Here, show them how squishy that is. Yeah, rock hard. It's a nice firm pair, mm -hmm. 2.25 inches, beautiful. They Good seem springs. like nice heavy duty. They seem like, though. yeah, they're not gonna be a problem. Yeah. Okay, wing joiner. Yeah, that sounds like carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Then we have the elevators, not the rudders. Okay. Same thing here. Beautiful underside is flat. Then we have the cool decals up top. And really nice decal. Yeah. Okay, so that'll go back like this. And we do have to glue those. So we'll probably use foam to foam. I would think so. So if you guys are wondering, when you do buy stuff from our links in the video description below, because we assume you will, uh, that's the number one best way you can help to pat us on the back as a channel. 
um, above and beyond just watching all the content and uh, clicking the bell for notifications. But if you wanna help support us financially and you just hate this plane, maybe you've already bought it and you don't wanna buy a replacement or anything like that, you can also do Patreon and PayPal, which is in the video description below. If you're on a mobile device, it's a little harder to get to the video description, we understand, but we do appreciate you doing that. That is sweet looking, oh my goodness. Wow. I love the scale lines on this. And yes, my other SU, whatever it is, is dead mm -hmm. down in our basement, which is super sad. This thing looks sweet. I love that. The gold paint is really cool. Metallic gold finish. Yeah. Really, really cool. Okay, the EDFs look nice too. Look how many fans they've got. Oh yeah. Those things look sweet. Really cool. Yeah. Super excited. They are plastic gear digital servos. What is the difference between a digital servo and a non-digital servo? By the way, we have big cheaters here. Mm. Cheater here, cheater here, and then inlets here, okay. Nose gear goes right there. Isn't that weird how far back it is? Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. It's part of the scale appearance. And then also the mains go in here. So plastic reinforced around that. And it looks like we've got the aileron plug there. Now, noticing that the aileron plug is there might make it a little bit challenging oh, yeah. to do flap on. So we're gonna have to find out if we're actually even capable of doing that. Uh, I'm gonna lay this down gently before we dig into the rest because there's a couple of loose components in here. Hey, do you wanna answer your question that you asked though? What question did I ask? What's the difference between a digital and a non-digital servo? Um, yeah. I know the difference between a plastic gear and a metal gear servo. The difference between a digital servo and an analog servo is one costs more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good guess. One has that. a different circuit. I've always thought it's like one of the biggest no-brainers in RC world to go with Metal Gear servos pretty much all the time. Yeah. Except that they're heavier and they're more expensive. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't see like a ton of extra value in digital servos. I don't mm -hmm. really see the difference because they're all going to be operating in the same realm of pulse width modulation. So I really don't understand. So if you guys want to teach me and educate me in the comments below, I had a hard time getting this thing out, obviously. What? That's the oh. tail extension. Yep. So on the back of this, that, that gets glued on uh, back here and it protrudes past the end. Mm -hmm. So this is a piece count, not too bad. It was actually a little bit challenging to unbox because all the pieces were so well packed. And that's what we found, pretty much generally speaking anymore, planes that are packed in foam, we've had pretty good luck. The planes that were not packed in foam have given us some, some issues. I was thinking about that the other day, how I said, we rarely have damage on planes. But then I started thinking about a few of the competitive brands that we've reviewed that rhyme with Scrinum. And, uh, and then I was thinking about how terrible they were in so many different regard. Yep. And it just made me think how fortunate we are to not be really doing many of those anymore. Yeah. Because, yeah, that was, it was just so much work. But that being said, the cool thing is there's a time and place for many things in the hobby. I can't even, I can't even remember where this one it goes. It went under that one. Hold oh, it went in the middle? Yep. Goodness gracious. Yeah, so I mean, in terms of foam packaging for planes, like we've had really good luck with them. I think we've maybe had like two planes the whole time we've been doing this that have had damage from yeah. shipping. And well, I take it back. There might've been a couple. I think, didn't the Hangar 9 have like a motor that broke off a motor mount? Yeah. I mean, there was like a wood box and the motor was like unglued or it's like the front half was pot considering free. Considering the number of planes that yeah. we receive shipped. Yes. Like, we have it's, very little. We have very good luck. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about glue and stuff real quick before we continue onward. Uh, basically, we do have foam to foam is kind of like our go-to. We enjoy this stuff. It's really nice. It works well. It's the type of glue that you can buy and leave opened with, with a cap on, obviously, and then we just use Q-tips to help spread it. But the key is it doesn't dry out on us, which is really nice. Uh, speaking of, we're almost out of that. We need to order some more of that. I noticed. But that being said, the foam to foam glue is not the cheapest stuff you can get on the market, but it's also not like anything crazy. I think it's about like 12, 13 bucks or something like that. And you can use this for quite a few planes. Now that being said, one gripe I have with all models that you get that need to be glued together is I kind of wish the manufacturer would include glue because I feel like then they could control that we're using the best choice for a glue mm. on, on like a plug and fly plane. Now on an R for something like that, that would just be totally impractical. And plus a lot of you guys are gonna wanna use epoxies and things like that. 
I've never really got into using epoxies. And you want to know how many times I've had a plane break because of a glue joint coming undone? Mm. Can you count on your fingers? I'm going to go with zero. Zero. Never. We have had things break, but not because of that. Because it's mostly of from like having, you know, like the plane go really fast in the ground and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's usually a bigger problem. Or buildings. Or Omega. what? Oh, do you want to show them inside the, yeah. Oh my goodness. Am I like doing something wrong? Is there a release maybe? Ooh, that makes me nervous like it got glued. Oh boy, that was scary. That was a big magnet, holy cow. No, it's, I think there was some glue or something. Oh. They must have glued, yeah, I bet there's a little bit of surface glue. Mm. Okay, so we have an EC5 in here, that's sweet. EC, oh, excuse me, EC3, I said that wrong, guys. And then look how nice that is. What? Yeah, I know, so you can put the receiver up here. Problem is, in every single experience with jets like this, you end up having to try to get the receiver you know, like out of the way of where the battery goes. Okay, so I never really know where it needs to be, but obviously somebody put some thought into this. Look how nice this is. I know, that's... Each of the wires, but this is a Y cable. Now I wanna talk about Y cables for a minute. Why do you wanna talk about Y cables? Why? Because this is the Y cable. This is the design of Y cable. You can get Y cables that are designed many different ways. One Y cable may have a straight cable that goes a long ways and then it splits off to the uh, ailerons or flaps or whatever it is. Some of them split off right at the connector and then they go to two different lines and then they continue on to their destination. That's the type we have here, which is great. Because if you wanna make this thing work with flap rons, which we'll probably go ahead and show even though it's probably not necessary, then this is the one you want. Because what I can do is I can cut off one side of these and I can actually make that into another connector. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. And then we have two connectors that can also be joined back with a Y cable up here. But instead we have you know, the ability to make these uh, separate. Now, the alternative way is you would have to pull this wire out and then probably hook on a singular cable and pull it back through, which might be the easier way of going about doing it. So you would have to actually hook onto this and then yank that back through, which might lead you into a situation where you can't finish or it breaks free and then you're all of a sudden, you're like, how do I get to there? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna tell you how they got to there. It was before they put the two halves together. There's also an accessible panel down here to get to the ESCs and all that. So we've got one, two, three, four screws, as you can see. So you'd have semi-accessibility there but my experience is sometimes when you take apart the plane, you know, you don't, it's not as easy to get around inside of there as you might think it should be. Okay, I think we need to start gluing, so we're gonna jump straight into the build part of this video. We're not even gonna pause. Are we gonna pause? We don't need to, I don't think so. We don't need to pause. So we can put the, uh, we put the cover back on. By the way, I didn't talk about this at all in the unbox, but look how sweet that looks. Mm -hmm. Totally awesome. Appropriate sized pilot. Mm -hmm. Glass is sort of clear. Love the way this looks. Good ventilation so you don't get a lot of fogging inside there, which is really nice. Okay, so let's see how much we can do without actually reading the instructions. I think this needs to go over here. I'm just gonna dry fit stuff real quick. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna go over here. This is obviously gonna go right here. I don't think this is gonna be a super difficult build. Um, these two are gonna go back here. And then obviously inside the nut and bolt sack, yeah, they don't overlap or anything. It's just should be super easy to build. Um, however, I wonder if we need the plane stand just to be on the safe side. Why don't we grab the plane stand and get set and come right back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and build this. I think I'm gonna just start with this tail doohickey. Couple of tricks about using foam to foam or mucilage, which is a Hobby King product. This would be something you can get at Horizon. Um, and you can get different types of glues from different places. But if you're gonna buy the AR631, from uh, Spectrum, the Horizon product, then while you're ordering this, you could order some glue if you don't already have a little bit. I would highly recommend having some. You may not think it's you know, the, the most important thing, but if you have good glue, it really does kind of make your life a lot easier. Um, CA is great and it definitely has its place, but I am telling you guys, the Chinese people, when they're building these models in China, they build them with this type of glue or mucilage. They use the China glue because it works great and they know what they're doing. So 
I know sometimes we kind of make fun of the Chinglish and stuff like that, but these Chinese people are good at building stuff. And that's part of the reason why they make stuff because they can make it, they can make it cheap and they can make it quick. So it would take me like millions of years to do half the stuff they do. So, all right, so we can just uh, put a little glue there and then I'm actually not even gonna spread it around. I'm gonna just come straight back to this side. You can see wherever it's not painted is a good place to put glue. You just wanna be careful not to get it too close to the edges because you don't want to mess. And then look, there's like a place with like a pinhole in it. I wonder if they jigged it up and they stuck it in there and then that's how they painted it. Yeah. So this part, I'm gonna go real light on that because I don't want it to scrape off on the sides. Okay, and then basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread around the glue onto the surfaces that I expect there will be a direct connection point. And this is a contact adhesive, so the best thing you can do is spread it in such a way that when they do touch together, they want to stick, like an envelope sticking to the part you just licked. Not, you know, like covered in glue and stick it in there and have it poop out in every direction because that's not what you're after. So now the best thing you can do to make this bond strong and lasting would be to wait. However, this one has to slip into a weird angle. So because of that reason, I'm gonna try to put it in there and show you what I'm talking about. Now I don't wanna get glue all over this stuff, so I'm gonna try walking it in like this. Okay, so I'm just pressing it in. A lot of loose little pieces of foam on stuff. So once you press on there, what happens and what's notorious about this mucilage type products is that things will back out of their seated position. If you don't push hard enough, they will back out. If you push hard enough and then as it glues, that lubricity of the product will allow it to slip back and you've got a little bit of elasticity even once it is set up. So my experience has been if you have to kind of slide it in, like if it's a rod for a wing, wing joiner, or supporting rod on a vertical stabilizer or something like that. Or, you know, like on this one, we had two that went into the fuse. You gotta work kind of quick because there's so much glue. And by the time that glue is tacky, it makes it very hard to slip together because you have a huge contact surface area. In this case, we had to slide that in. So I wanted to slide it in right away, okay? So don't grab it by that thing either yet, okay? So I guess we could do the horizontal, or excuse me, the horizontal stabilizers Obviously this one goes over here. It's pretty straightforward how they go, okay? And then there's fins that go in on top of those. Why don't we go ahead and do this one first since it's like over on this side. Okay, so real quick, we're just gonna go kind of a decent slather there. And then I'm gonna do a decent slather here. I'm just looking for good symmetrical behavior. And then I'm gonna lay the sticky part up there. Oh, by the way, Tom, thanks for sending us this plane stand. You sent it to us years ago and we've used it a ton. And you watch us struggle for years using just like, My what do blanket. we use? Blankets. Bean bags. Bean bags. They actually, bean bags worked great, but the bean bags, the cats took a liking to them and guess what happened to our bean bags, guys? We turned them into poor man's asphalt. That's right, they're melted. They're gone forever because the cats peed all over them. I mean, we love our cats, but goodness gracious, what is wrong with them? Why would they do that? Well, we had like 11 there for a while. And that was- a And bit, that's when it happened, you think? That was a bit excessive. That was, yeah, we were like the cat lady mm -hmm. on crack. Excuse me, on steroids. Sorry. Steroids are only illegal if you buy them illegally. Okay, so now I am gonna let that set up and I'm gonna lay this on here, let that ball joint hold that up off of our counter. Now we've already got a little bit of glue here, so I'll just go ahead and slather that around and then i think we don't want to put it on that other face we just want it here and then on the side of the servo now it might behoove you to test the servo too at this point but you know since we're filming this and stuff we're not going to do the right thing we're just going to tell you guys to do the right thing in hopes that you'll do the right thing even though we're not going to do the right thing Does that makes sense mm -hmm. And I'm actually gonna apply a little bit more on here because I wanna have a little bit more adhesion. And yes, this is not necessarily like a volume thing. You just need to have enough to make it tacky on both sides. And yes, it will dry up and yes, it will be more effective in a partially dried up state because then it becomes really tacky. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, of course, I've got kind of puddling here. We, you don't really want puddling so the puddling will cause you other problems, okay? 
So now this, I'm just gonna shear that little bit of extra into the contact area here. I feel like it's not quite tacked up enough, but it's probably on the border. So let's try, obviously, ball joints here. That's really nice. You might wanna work these a few times so that that hinge, it is a pinch hinge, is going to be no problem for you later. Okay, so just slipping that into its position, that is definitely premature. Uh, it's definitely feeling a little bit, a little not bit, tacky enough. yeah, not tacky enough. It went in way too easy. So I'm just gonna pull that off and let that cook off for a little while longer. Now, while that's going, we can get these prepped as well. These, of course, are gonna be the ventral fins. The ventral fins are gonna trap the horizontal stabilizers in there. And you can see that they are the same. And so that means that I actually probably got two of the ventral fins and there's supposed to be one that's like this and then one that's mirrored. So I'm pretty sure I got one wrong. See, that is, that is not correct. Mm. So they mm -hmm. screwed that up, I'm pretty sure. Um, Cause it looks like this one goes probably here. Um, actually, yeah, the one they screwed up is actually, this is the correct one for over here. And then this is also the correct one for over here. So they just happen to send me two rights or two lefts. Yeah, not a big deal. We can make it work. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this, now that this is tacked up for just a minute longer. So, oh yeah, way tackier. See how it's harder to slide in? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for, perfect. Okay, then this one actually was set up about the same time. So we'll just go ahead and slide that in. Yeah, that feels like it's probably on the verge of being about right. Real easy assembly. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about again. I don't know if you guys can see this, but if you look on the bottom, there is a rounded edge here, and then there's kind of a flat edge here. And you can see how one, actually both of them, are bumped up toward the top. This one should be bumped up toward the top. It's supposed to be a mirrored part. Okay, so let's see if there's any way to work around that. That's not gonna work. This is going to work. That's correct in this right there. That's correct. This one here is not correct. So we have to figure a way to make that work. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take and probably take an X-Acto knife to this. Shouldn't be real super hard. Hopefully that's just an isolated incident with one of these early samples that we sometimes get. <clears throat> and I don't know, I mean, you would imagine they probably occasionally send us stuff that's early. They might have a little mistake here and there. See how it's rounded like this? I'm gonna mimic that on the other side. This is gonna be covered up, so you'll never know except that we filmed it. And you guys may notice that about our channel. We don't really shy away from when things get screwed up because things get screwed up. But you know, like that's pretty tolerable. That's not too bad. Now, if you had two um, left horizontal stabilizers, you'd be screwed. Mm. If you had two vertical stabilizers, you'd be screwed. Yeah, that won't be that big a deal. I don't think anybody's ever gonna know any better. Yep. So you see how easy that was, guys? Wasn't a big deal. Let's put a little bit of glue here. One little, just kind of stripe. Same thing here, one stripe. We can let that cook off for a little bit. And same thing here, one stripe and one stripe. So far, pretty easy build. Mm -hmm. Hasn't taken very long, definitely more than 20 minutes. But, you know, we're trying to share a lot of things and you guys aren't necessarily having to do that. So you, you might be able to actually get it done in that time frame. We're only at 28, and 28 that's minutes. including the unbox part. Oh, really? So yeah, I, you're actually doing pretty good. It's like miraculous for a Brian Phillips RC video. Well, I mean, like, we're not, and you were close to being done. We're not, <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not, that's true, actually. Okay, so we can let that set and cook off for a minute and just kind of come back to this, make sure we press it. Everything feels pretty good, so I'm gonna flip it over. We'll come right back to those vertical or those ventral fins. So now we need to do vertical stabilizers and the vertical stabilizers are gonna need glue on both surfaces, just like before. This is keyed, so it's super easy to put in. Should be no problem. We already dry fit everything. And so basically where there is no paint, that's where the, we're gonna be putting some glue. Pretty straightforward stuff. We definitely need more of this glue, so we're gonna have to reach out about that. And, uh, okay. So same thing on the other side, we're just kind of running basically a couple of seams and then we'll spread it. But then I'm gonna put glue also on the other contact surface. 
And that's pretty straightforward stuff. And it's really nice when they don't paint this part because then you know exactly where the paint, mm -hmm. you know exactly where you're supposed to be spreading your glue. And it seems like a minor detail, but sometimes it's a little bit tricky. And God forbid you put it on the wrong surface, you almost certainly screw up your paint. So it is really nice to have that little help and aid. By the way, building these planes has gotten so much easier over the years now, partly because we're getting better at it, but then partly because the manufacturers have listened to a lot of our gripes and they've been embarrassed into changing some of the practices that they used. So that's awesome. That's really good. I'm glad. Responsive embarrassment. It's what we do best. Actually, the glue is on this side, so I have to set this. I'm gonna set it so it hangs over the edge. Okay. And then I'm actually gonna flip the plane around. One of the things that's nice about these plane stands is you can pick up the whole stand and move the plane for occasions just like this. If you guys don't have a plane stand, it's definitely something that's worthwhile. I think they go for about 20 or 30 bucks. They're not too bad. There's a couple of different brands on the market, but if you wanna buy the one we do, we usually kind of have it in the links, but it's one of the first links to go when we start running out of characters. We have limits on how many characters we can put in our video description. And we just have been going through painstakingly updating our links. Uh, one of our main uh, affiliates has just redone their, their links and stuff. So we have to redo everything, which is a humongous pain in the butt. It's probably takes about eight weeks to do that. That's how many links we have. It's insane. Yep. But we've used that on huge planes and small planes. Yep. And it almost always works. Yeah, the plane stand. You never adjust it. Yeah. Plane yeah. Plane. Well, that's not true. It is extremely hard to adjust when you do have to adjust it. So just keep that in mind. The other thing too, is you can use baby powder and stuff on there and it'll make those things slide through easier. Mm. So that's something uh, one of my viewers had suggested, or maybe Tom, I don't know. Tom got this for us. So mm -hmm. you would think he knows. I'll just lay that down there. Let that cook off. I think at this point we should flip the plane, put the ventral fins back on, okay. and we'll show you what it's like when you let that glue cook off a little bit. Now, does that nose cone need to be glued on or does it just magnet? Uh, there, I can see a magnet. Okay, it's probably plane, magnetically so. attached. Yeah. Okay. So this one here is the one that's weird. So I'll stick that one in first. You see how, see how tricky that one is? Because it's like so sticky now. Watch this. Okay, so this one also, it's tacky. It looks like the glue is dry, but it's not. It'll actually just stick in there. We might have waited too long on this one. Yeah, but look at that. Yeah. That is just incredible to me how quick that stuff works. So if you guys ever wondered like what the difference is, CA uh, cytoacrylate, uh, cyanoacrylate, and I, I never say it right. <clears throat> that rhymed. That is super glue. And super glue, if you get it, you need to get some kicker or accelerant and that will make it set up really fast. Okay, so now we're gonna do this one first because that's what we glued first. Mm -hmm. Just slide that down into the keyed hole. See how hard it is to press in? That's because of the glue. And the glue makes it challenging to push in. The ventral fins probably would have been better to push the vertical stabilizers in first. But I can definitely live with that. I definitely do not like how easy those things are moving. because I want the ventral fins, vertical stabilizers, and horizontal stabilizers to all be in a good spot. Okay, so pressing this in now. Same thing, very, very tacky now. If you use CA, CA has some advantages. One of the, big, one of the biggest advantages is that you just, you glue it, you put them together, you put a little kicker on it, and you're done. There's less thought involved but there's also almost no way of getting it done, undone, and it's also quite brittle, okay? This stuff keeps a little bit of elasticity so that if you ever need to break them apart, you can use kicker to actually break down that glue, but the kicker will also break down many of the paint finishes on these current planes. So just be aware of that. Okay, so that looks pretty sweet, actually. Mm -hmm. Super happy with that. I just noticed one of my decals was lifting on the edge. I'm gonna press that down. Oh yeah, it's just, you can be pressed down a little bit. That looks super nice. Let's put the nose cone on quick. Definitely has a magnet on it. Definitely has a magnet in it. Oh yeah, that is so nice. nice. What a beaut, Very guys. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so now the wings are interestingly bolt-on. So to me, a little bit strange that you would do bolt-on wings and glue together a horizontal stab. 
but I think it just has to do with the thickness and material that's available to hang on to. There is gonna be a minimum thickness you need to be able to put plastic reinforcement. And also it depends on how heavy you want the wings to be compared to how heavy you want the tail to be or vice versa. There are applications where you can get away with one but not the other. Okay, so I'm just gonna press this through. Now I can't see what direction that connector goes, so I'm hoping I can pull this out. And yes, I can. Okay, so brown goes toward my belly. So I'll grab the brown, pull that toward my belly, and then clip them together. So this is, of course, for the aileron on the wing. Okay. Now, obviously, there's no LEDs on this because this is a smaller plane. And I gotta say, on jets and stuff, it's cool to have the LEDs, but I generally don't fly jets, um, you know, like into the twilight hours near as much as I would something that's slower flying. It's hard flying slower flying planes, let alone fast jets. This is looking sweet, by the way. Super excited. Okay, and it just happens to be crazy windy, so it sucks because we probably won't be able to fly this today. Okay, brown toward the camera crew and brown toward the camera crew. Okay, so that's clipped in there. Nice high quality clipping Y cable here that goes up to the front. Okay, and we are gonna show how to split that wire here shortly. So we'll have to add that to our list of things to worry about. So it's obviously gonna add to the 20 minutes. It's not actually 20. Let me use this Q-tip because I can just to push that wire down a little bit. Now I can get this seated all the way in. A little bit of glue here. See if that comes off. I think it would, but I'm not gonna mess with it any further right now. Absolutely gorgeous. Love the missile rails. Love the way it looks. That thing looks sweet. Okay, so into the nut and bolt sack we go. Camera crew, mm -hmm. you wanna check this out? So we're gonna dump that out. That's everything in there. As you can see, there's not very many pieces. Mm -mm. It does come with two Allen wrenches. That's pretty sweet. So there's the set screw and then there's five of these. So these are for the wings. Now I am gonna use a nut driver. The nut driver is just gonna make it easier for us to drive. Hold on, I gotta check something. Oh, it's at 99% the battery is. Oh, okay. The 2200 4S is kind of what I think we should go with on this plane. Okay, so I have four screws here on the counter. I think they're two millimeters. So I'm gonna just grab this. Uh, is that two millimeters? Yep, two millimeters. All right, so I'm gonna grab this plane and just be careful, we still are kind of curing on the back. So show the people there, you see that vertical stabilizer? I'm gonna hold this, show them how I'm holding this between my, my armpit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold this and then push that together because you may find it hard to hang on to this plane and it is because you don't wanna knock the ventral fin off, you don't wanna knock the horizontal stabilizer, you don't wanna knock the vertical stabilizer and you wanna make sure those things stay true as you're working. Now what you don't wanna do is definitely ignore all of those things. Don't ignore them because if they aren't perfectly straight, now is the time to align them while the glue is setting up. So I gotta be real careful to get the nacelles or the engine piece there on the support. Okay, mm -hmm. I did, good. All right, so we have four screws. These are not lined up yet, so I'm just pressing. Oh yeah, pretty easy to line up. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna put my elbow on the plane. I'm gonna hold my pinky on the nacelle and then push in. Yeah, we're good. Oh yeah, no problem at all. This is a fairly small plane. Now, some of you guys might be inclined to do belly landings with this plane. I, for one, am not gonna be belly landing this plane because it is gorgeous. Now, that being said, the ventral fins, you might as well not even put those on if you're gonna belly land because they're gonna rip off the first time you land. So I would suggest, this looks good with the wheels up, wheels down, in my opinion, and especially with flaperons. But there again, if you're just belly landing this thing, maybe the flaperons don't make sense because you know, you're not gonna need to do ultra super slow flight to do a belly landing because it's gonna be into the grass and stuff. Oh my goodness. Ooh. This thing is tight, tight like a tiger. It's going, but it's just tight. And I won't have to take this apart for transport 
Some of you guys might have to, but if you do have to take apart this plane, you got a really small car or motorcycle. What is the situation here? I'm, I'm gonna need you to start that. If I hold this, can you start that? Mm -hmm. Just turn it, push down. Is it going for you? It feels like it. No, it's not, go faster. There it goes. Once it starts, I can take back over. Yeah, it's going. Okay. Got it. Yep. Oh yeah, it's going now. Thank you. Yeah, that was hard. To Sorry, we just needed three hands <laughs> for a second. That is one thing that we run into building these planes. Having somebody help you uh, really does not make it easier. Most of the time, you don't need a lot of help. You could probably figure it out, but yeah. it's a lot easier if you have somebody give you a hand on something like that. Okay, so basically, What's happening is the back one just isn't quite lined up and the front one is mostly lined up. So if you hold the nacelle and just kind of rock one or the other into position, it just makes it so much easier because I can push hard against this and then I can just use my left hand to turn this. It goes right in, no problem. And then that gives you a place to pivot against. And you're like, but isn't there a wing joiner in there, like a wing spar? Yes, there is a wing spar in there but the wing spar still allows quite a bit of movement forward and backward on there. That one just pretty much stuck in place. Okay, this is like, I noticed it was kind of challenging to get the two millimeter drive in there. I was thinking to myself, maybe it isn't two millimeters, oh. but I, I'm pretty sure it is two millimeters. That's a very common size on yeah. these airplanes. Okay, so we're almost done. And by the way, Tom also sent us his driver set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's kind of been super helpful to us. So thank you, Tom. It's been a while since we mentioned that. Um, all right, so everything is glued. Everything is technically assembled except for the landing gear, which I'm sort of torn on the landing gear because I know some of you guys are gonna think, you know what, I'm gonna belly land mine. I don't want you to feel like that's a bad choice. I just want you to understand that good Lord, it is windy out there. That's Show crazy. them the windsock. That's so demoralizing mm. when you're building a new plane to watch a windsock whipping like that. It's been like that all And day. you think, how is it ever gonna calm down? <laughs> uh, these are the types of things that go through your brain when you're obsessed with airplanes. Um, okay, so let's talk about how to assemble the inside, <clears throat> the inside part for the landing gear. Because as you can see, it looks very clean on the bottom. And this does look stinking gorgeous. It is so tempting to just go belly landings on this. Mm, you know, you're not gonna do that. I know I'm not gonna do it, but I still can understand why people would wanna do it. Yeah. Because that thing looks so sweet and it's gonna look so sexy with those landing gear up. Oh, it's so good. All right, well, at any rate, let's go ahead and get in here and see what it does. I gotta be careful about just hitting the nacelles on the support here. Um, surprisingly, it does plop down nice on the plane stand. Okay, so pulling this up. You guys see what's going on there? This kind of has to be out of the way, maybe. Maybe we can do this. Mm, I don't know. Maybe we can do that. Hmm, that might work. Okay, so then the nose gear is like this, right? So we have a two or three components involved here. So this is going to go on, and then that's going to get a set screw right there. And then this is gonna pivot the nose gear, okay? So pretty simple stuff. Now, there is another trick. If you're trying to save channels on a simple bank and yank plane that doesn't have a rudder. And what you can do is you can actually assign and plug this into your ailerons. And you're like, that would be the stupidest thing ever, Brian. Not necessarily, because here's why. You can actually make the same output from the aileron as you would for your nose, for your steerable. And then you can mix your rudder and ailerons to both do the same thing on the sticks. So as you're flying, you fly and the wheel would turn and it doesn't really like have to turn, but that does help to yaw the plane a little bit and induce the correct roll. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this like I always do, and then at some point we'll probably put a little rudder on here that's clear, clear plastic. And we did that on our other X-Fly, which was the T7, right? The T7A. The Boeing T7A. Mm -hmm. 
So, yeah. and it works it, really sharp. So we'll keep that for another video, show you what it looks like stock, but just want to give you an idea of the end game we've got going here. So from beneath, grab and put that through and it's keyed on both sides. You can actually feed that either way. See, keyed on both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with a little springy thing back. Okay. So simple stuff there. And you know what? Why don't we just put the mains in? Cause then I can take it off the plane stand and I have to stop worrying about this. Okay. Okay, so these go obviously like this. Or wait, which way do they go? That's a good question. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I had it right. Okay. Spring back. What are you looking at, camera crew? You make me nervous there. I was just reading over your shoulder. I can't get that thing in there to save my life. Goodness gracious. Do you see what I'm doing or doing wrong? You need to rock it in. There we go. Okay, That's yeah. better. Okay, do you guys see what I did differently there? I came at it like this, and that allowed it to be aligned for better penetration. And then it just drops down in. Okay, now I'm going back there. there. You go. If you're not aligned, it's not going to go in the hole. If you don't align it, you may have trouble ramming it in. All right, so that's in there now. As with many jets, it wants to sit back on its back on its tail, but I need to stop that. So can I have that, please? Mm -hmm. Ow, just kicked my foot. I wanna see if I can get this underneath in the cell, just because we don't wanna put weight on this, because it's gonna unglue it, okay? Mm -hmm. That's probably fine. I don't know if it's gonna stay that way. I could also put a battery in. That might be the easier approach. Why don't we just put a battery in? We're gonna need to do radio setup soon enough anyway. Yep. Okay, so we have a 2200 4S here, which is the one we discussed, it's a Gen 2. Um, not that Gen 2 is gonna be especially better over Gen 1 because we don't have the balance lead, so we won't be able to use a voltage alarm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick this in here and that should hold the nose down just while we're working. Really high quality straps on this plane. Oh man, it's tight in here. I can tell. It's gonna be one of those planes for loading, loading the battery. Okay, so can you hold that there for just a second, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I need to basically try to get this battery in here. I wanna use a 3200 if it'll fit, but I'm just thinking it's probably gonna be a mm. CG issue. Okay, so lifting, okay, slip it in like that. And then, there we go. And uh, I need to slide that around. Okay, so good enough. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do shelf liner in there too. But I don't know where that battery needs to go yet, so let's come back to that. Okay. Okay, so you can let go of that. So that's gonna hopefully reach up to the front. But if we need the receiver back here, I'm not sure how that's gonna work yet. So this thing is the little adapter but then you have to be able to get to this screw. So they do give you these um, fixtures and our wheel is sideways right now. So I want it to be like that, right? With the spring in the back. Yeah, probably like that. So this gets dropped in there. And when it's dropped in there, I need room for my elbow. Okay. There it goes. It's dropped in there. And the battery lead just wants to keep popping out. My apologies, folks. And then basically we've got two different Allen keys here. Looks like the Allen key is gonna be the smaller one. Okay, so I don't even know what size that is. Probably one millimeter. And then we have to somehow screw that in. That's gonna be a pain. If I go this way, I can spin it like this with my fingers, okay. I hope. Goodness gracious. That's gonna be hard to take off in the field if you decide to change your mind for doing grass ops. So you'll have to make your decision ahead of time, kind of do your guesswork. But there again, we're setting up flaperons, which is gonna take a little bit of effort. Oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna start this first, just cause it's a lot easier to do this out here. Then you can see when it breaks into that little surface, you see, now I can back it off just a hair. Sorry, I gotta. I gotta take this nose cone off so I can get my belly up against here. Mm, okay. 
Okay, so now we can, of course, what came first, the chicken or the egg? I need the battery in there to hold the nose down, but the battery gets in the way. Oh boy. So you see how that drops down in there? Mm -hmm. I just don't know if I'm so con convinced that that's gonna be a long-term solution. I feel like it's a little bit vulnerable to coming out. What do you think? Just sits on there, right? Yeah, it goes from the top to the bottom. Yeah. And what I'm thinking about is, as long as it's secured, it's probably not a big deal, okay? Why is there a zip tie in there? What are you thinking? Put like a zip tie around it so it doesn't... Okay, so grabbing this, turning it. Nope, not gonna work. I need Lyman pliers. Okay, so I'm having trouble getting this torqued, so that's why I went and got Lyman pliers. So now I can put this in there and then torque it. Okay, because there's just not much play here. There's not much room to get in there. I can't get my hands in, my hands are too big. And so I'm trying to torque down so I can actually get that thing to mate uh, with the face of the, the set screw. And then this thing pops out at the most annoying time. Okay, so let's see if we can get that. Yeah, we're good there. That's, that's tight enough, I think, maybe. I don't know, I still don't trust it. I still don't trust it as far as I can throw it. So you see my problem here, guys. I'm just having a, a weird angle here. And I had the same problem on the T7. It's, I don't like this style. It's, it works, but it's a real pain in the neck to get in here. Again, otherwise not been a bad build. But you see what I'm talking about though? Mm-hmm. Like you just, oh man, that feels like I was stripping it. I think that's all I'm gonna get. <clears throat> I don't think I'm gonna get any more. And then look where that wire is compared to the, the servo control horn. Mm. It's just in a vulnerable spot. And I don't like when they're in vulnerable spots like that. So anyway, I guess, we're where we need to be on that. So now the next big thing we have to do is we have to basically make a commitment on how we're gonna operate the flapper on. So I'm gonna grab a 1300 milliamp hour battery. I'm gonna grab the XBC battery checker. And then I just wanna confirm my theory quick. I got some strippers here. You always wanna keep a pair of strippers around all the time. Okay, so XBC powers up. Press and hold. Go back. There we go, servo test. Start the servo test. Then I can plug in, in this case, there's the servo plug there. It's got a plus, uh, excuse me, an S plus and minus. Minus is toward Megan. Okay, rudder and ailerons. Okay, minus is toward Megan. I just rotated it. Okay, so now the ailerons are plugged in. Okay, so I've got the ailerons obviously moving through a sweep function. So in order to make this thing flap rons, I gotta split these two wires. Okay, so that was the first part of the test. The second part of the test is actually very simple. Now this still says aileron. So I kinda like the fact that it says aileron but what are we gonna do? I think we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna cut this as, as high up as we can, okay? Now that is not likely to short out with any of your other wires. Now we can test it again. It's not the only way to do this, it's just the way I'm doing this. So as you can see, we've only got one hooked up. So that means this one's gonna go to the other side, okay? And you're like, but how do you land that on your receiver, Brian? Well, the way you land that on your receiver is you have to build an end on there, okay? So that's the next thing we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go downstairs and get our end building tool and come right back and show you how to do it. Okay, so we got a kit. This kit has a bunch of different connectors in it. Um, this looks like the right style. It's just like a universal servo connector. Now, the other thing you can do, which is quite obvious, is you can just get a servo extension cord, cut it in half. And what I would usually suggest is if you don't have them, you can literally take a bind plug and take that apart 
And then you can use those to build one of these ends along with, along with these little connectors. So there's a male and a female. Okay. And so what you want to do is build the sockets go into here. Okay. So these are the sockets. So I'm actually going to pull this chair around here because I need to sit down a little bit for this. And we've got strippers in here. So we've got, you know, like stripper one, stripper two. Strippers everywhere. Strippers everywhere. And then this is the crimping tool. I hate this tool and yet I hate it so much that I have two of them. I, it's like one of the worst tools to use. So I'll show you why. So what you have to do is you have to basically get several of these little turds. You need three of them, or if you're like me, seven. <laughs> and they're super easy to work with and not easy at all to screw up. It's fun to film too. Yep, I'm sure it is. Okay, so strippers are gonna be necessary for this application because what you have to do, you know what, actually, you know what I ought to do? Hmm. You know what would be smarter? What? Than sitting in front of the cat water. Because like, I'm not trying to like sit in the pool. I could sit where there's not a cat water under me. Well, That'd be smart. Extra fun. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I need to strip these tips so that I can, I can mount this and build this little thing, okay? So remember, just do all three of them the same amount. And what you wanna do if you need a gauge would be to hold this thing up here and you wanna strip enough to go into that front portion. And I usually strip enough to go up about like that. Okay. So then I just get in there and I just strip a little bit and then I strip the same amount and you can actually just line it up with your last one that you just cut off because they usually stay in there. And if you're like a normal electrician, you just throw those on the ground and let somebody else pick them up. I, I don't do that though. I'm a clean freak. Okay, so then you're gonna take this thing and you're gonna lay it into that channel. And if you don't have one of these doohickeys, there's other ways to do this, but that's the best way. That's the best and most frustrating, okay? So you're gonna have the copper in there and this little part's gonna bite the sheath and this little part is gonna bite the copper, okay? So in order to bite the copper, you've got this little crimping tool here and this is gonna crimp it exactly the right amount. And when you look at this, you think there's a little shelf on the back and a shelf on the front and a shelf on the back and a shelf on the front and it moves so that you're able to see, you see how there's like a thicker area up here and a thinner area in the front? So you have to make a value judgment on which size this is gonna fit. Okay, one fits there and obviously doesn't go that direction. And then this one's obviously too big, so it goes here. And so then you have to stick it in there like that. And usually the easiest way to do this is to get this lined up and start the crimp process and then it ratchets what I usually do is I go like this and then I stop, see? And it's ready to receive the wire. Now it doesn't matter which one you put in there but it's quite difficult to tell how deep because penetration is hard to measure on this tool. So I'm gonna go as far as I think I need and I'm gonna crimp it. And then once it lets go, look at that. Fancy dance. As easy as that, how could you possibly mess it up? There's only 47 different <laughs> ways, okay? So now we just have to do that exactly perfect three more times. See this? Actually, I'll do two more times. Well, I'm sorry. That's, you are correct. Camera crew. And I'm gonna hold it the same way so I get the same output, same results, okay? And you don't want these wires going in every different direction and getting tangled up on themselves and doing stupid things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and no, I cannot hold this so it's easier to see. You're gonna have nope, to hold your okay. camera in a different spot. I apologize. And then I have to just kind of go in there and hope to God that I get it right because there's no way to see. And then look at that. Would you look at that? Look at that. 
See the wires? They came all the way out the tip. Is that okay or not? It's perfect. Oh. Okay. It's perfect. See how I'm doing this, guys? Kind of get that engagement. Now, there's easier ways to do these things. Um, but what I've found is the best way to do it is to just destroy the first 67 or so. <laughs> and then maybe someday you'll get good enough that you don't destroy every third one. And it's super annoying because when you do screw up one, you screwed, you got to redo the other two because they won't be the right length then. I'm making it worse than it really is. Okay, there you go. Okay, see? Kappa. The kappa goes through. Now, how do you tell? And then there's a little, there's like a little key in here that you can release on, on that tool if you're not, you know, if you don't pinch your fingers. And sometimes you can use a stripper to release it. But you see, you can actually release that key and it'll pop back one step on the ratchet. Hmm. Okay. Pretty amazing. I bet you didn't even know I had that skill, camera crew. I knew you had that skill. Here, see this? Look at those. I've seen you do those all Those three places. Sorts of weird things. That's a gift for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Is this supposed to go in my flower vase? Of I got you flowers, sort of. Nope. I would, you married into those flowers. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this. So now we've got two connectors that are similar, okay? And we need them to end up being the same. So I wanna make sure the brown goes over here. And how do you know which direction goes in the hole? The direction that this goes is the direction that the tab catches. So it's gonna go like, actually it seems like this. Okay, so then you just push it in and if you got it wrong, it won't click. But I didn't get it wrong, so it did click, but I gotta go even farther. Listen, you hear the second click. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps it. And yes, that's what that's what is in charge of your multi thousand dollar plane. Sweet. Multi thousand. Yep. Multi thousand. Not this one, but some. Okay, so now we need to do red. And so we gotta get that the same direction. So we'll just slip that in until it clicks. See how it clicked? I'm gonna shut up so you can hear the second click. And if this screws up. You hear it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you see why it's not clicking always is because sometimes you get that over penetration on your bite from the tool. Oh yeah, did you see what just happened there? Yeah. Nope, we're good, it didn't break. It just bent a little bit. Okay, and then we can slip that through and then push it all the way. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, now keep in mind, jokingly I say what could possibly go wrong, but in all seriousness, this is, an aileron, there's two of them. It's a redundant channel. So if you're gonna have a problem on one, this would be the place to have it because it's one of the few redundant channels. Now, if you have flaps deployed, I realize they're not redundant anymore because there's a left and a right. And if you only have one down, you're gonna roll out of control into a fiery blast of death. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna plug this in and test it now. And if it doesn't work, then we're gonna pause and pretend like I did it right the first time. <laughs> Okay, good. Okay. As you can see, that's the one I was working on. Thank goodness. Now I'm gonna unplug that one and I'm gonna stick in the other one. A lot of sticking it in today. See? Oh, I love when things work. All it took was all those 47 simple steps. Pretty cool, right guys? Now, all we have to do is all the rest of the stuff. That wasn't included in your 20 minutes. That actually technically wasn't because you don't have to do flap rounds unless you're cool like Brian Phillips RC. Oh. Right, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Sister. So what I'm gonna do next is I basically need to actually do radio setup. Now radio setup, as you guys know, is a hallmark of Brian Phillips RC. If you're new to the hobby and you don't know what you're doing, Come here and we will help you build lots of bad habits. But also there's a good chance you might actually learn how to do what you need to do in the meantime too. But just keep in mind, when you hear something on Brian Phillips RC, there's one thing I gotta ask of you. If you're new to the hobby, here is a tip that will help you succeed greatly in the hobby. Buy a transmitter 
that is a transmitter that is more expensive than the cheapest one you can find. Now, I say that because I have also been in your shoes and I have bought the cheapest one you can find. And we have reviewed the cheapest ones you can find that we didn't buy. And yes, there is something to be said for the Spectrum receivers and that they are actually a little easier and more intuitive to set up than some of the competitive offerings. Speaking of open source choices. Now, that's not to say that open source is bad or that there's some inherent problem with them. I believe they're good. I also believe lemon's good. I also believe that orange is good, even though they break the rules legally, and I could care less about that. To be perfectly frank, I don't care if they break the FCC rules. Go ahead, break them, I don't care. But at the end of the day, I want it to work in my plane, and I don't want to have interference issues. And I know some of you guys complain about Spectrum getting interference at your field, or you know, JR getting interference at your field, or Jetty getting interference, or whatever it is. I don't know, I can't control that, neither can you. So if you have problems with Spectrum, I get it, you know, so, uh, but at the end of the day, we've had super limited bad experience. I mean, like, we had somebody come from California and they visited in a, mm. an RV and they opened a brand new AeroScout, 1.1. And this guy had it chipped to our house ahead of his arrival so it could be like a kid's birthday present. And we opened it up and he had problems with it. And it was no fault of his. I mean, I dug the thing apart and took looked at everything and I don't think there's anything wrong with what what they did because they opened it in front of us and so yes things do happen but like literally out of the hundreds of spectrum receivers I think that's like the only time we've had a problem with that also I had a sport cub s where I eventually lost radio contact found out I had ripped the antenna completely off inside the plane and then later I found out on the bendy antenna of my dx5 that I had it what was dx5 was the dx5 was it a it was a 5i or something like that. Six year. No, yeah, it was a DX, DX5i. Okay. It was old. Or maybe yeah. it was just a DX5. We had a DX4i after that. Anyway, my grandpa had actuated the antenna so many times that it broke the antenna also. So I had a broken antenna and a missing antenna, and then it stopped working. Yeah. So it's like, you know, that, that's pretty bad circumstances. I have had problems with other brands where I've had complete loss of signal while flying very fast. Rare Bear comes to mind mm -hmm. it was going really fast i had a complete loss of signal on another one that was over at uh over the uh labs facility where we used to fly and yep. the maintenance guys let us crawl and find it or actually I, he went on the roof and got it for us mm -hmm. super cool group of guys really nice and uh they also found the drop tanks that were not bombs that had bomb drop feature that I accidentally dropped under the federal facility. <laughs> they went and got them for me. So that's, this, is, this is why you keep relationships good with people you, you fly around because there's a good chance you're gonna end up on the roof someday. So anyway, the point is we've had, I lost, that was the L39. And I can't remember what was in that now. I think I had a lemon in there. Yeah, I don't remember. But I lost that one. Yeah. And it, yep. a million pieces. Yep. And then also Esteban had to climb a tree because I had an Arcus M, and that was a Lemon 7-channel DSMX-P, which meant they had the Stabilizer Plus. So I can't honestly think of other times when I had radio signals. Generally, it was just my thumbs and brain making mistakes other than was, that. Was that when Esteban got pulled over? Did they yes. climb the tree? Yes, after he climbed the tree, <laughs> he, he was, was like all, all scratched, scratched up, up, and then he decided it'd be a good opportunity to run a stop sign in front of the police officer. <laughs> Good thinking, Esteban. And so the cop pulls him over and he's like, are you okay? Have you, <laughs> you yeah. know? And they were probably thinking this guy just broke into somebody's house because he's all scratched up. Oh, it was so funny. I wish I would have been there, but I wasn't. I was just laughing on the phone as he explained the situation. So anyway, he did survive that incident. So everybody's had a good day. So we're gonna use this AR-631. So story time with Brian Phillips out. Also at some point, uh, it's, this plane was provided with uh, Velcro, which is pretty common. And we are gonna go ahead and remove and use the Velcro to hold some shelf liner. Or we may, it's kind of a tight pocket, so I'm wondering if maybe we'll just glue the shelf liner down. We've had mixed luck with that. Most of the time the shelf liner works fine. And if you don't know what I'm talking about with shelf liner, uh, shelf liner, is there shelf liner in that? Can you show them in there? Yeah, there is. That's what we That's use shelf liner for. Drying mat. It Here. holds stuff like so when your you, stuff like, doesn't move around. 
So like when you slam the drawer, so when the kids this stuff do it, does. Yes, but the little ones don't. So the same concept works with batteries on foam. Bef before you like glue that in, do we need to check the CG? No. Okay. We're just not going to glue it in. Oh, but, okay. but we are going to have it available because okay. we'll get to that eventually. Uh, but yes, good, good question. So what we are going to do is we have to figure out where this goes. And see, this puts us in a dilemma because like what came first, the chicken or the egg? We need to know where the receiver goes so we can get the CG tested. But we need to know where the CG is so we know not to put the receiver in the way of where you need the batteries. So it is a tough yep. spot. And this is one of those things where you can get it wrong. So one trick is to not mount the receiver until you're sure. And we have done that with mixed results. Generally, we just mount them. Mm -hmm. We do. Generally, we mount them and we have good luck. Now, why does it matter where you mount your receiver? That depends on if it's a stabilized receiver or if it's just a standard receiver that doesn't have stabilization or auto leveling or anything like that. All the Spectrum gear now that has AS3X also has safe. And so it's just a matter of setting up those features. There is a manual, it kind of talks about it a little bit, walks you through the process. But there again, it's so much easier to watch a Brian Phillips RC video and just literally do the same thing. Now keep in mind, we're setting up flapperons on this plane and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. It's literally no extra effort. Well, a couple minutes of extra effort. We had to build that connector. Yeah. All right, so you'll see this has a singular antenna and a clicky button. The button on top that's the Spectrum logo is the bind button. You can also use a bind plug if you prefer. But where's the fun in that? So we have plugs here. My expectation is that we are gonna need to get the battery back here to get CG right. Mm. I could be completely wrong. I want you to take note of how big it is in here or mm -hmm. not big, okay? Mm -hmm. You see this? That has to go back. This battery is in backward. Yep, that's true. It is not gonna work where it is. So this is the sort of thing you have to kind of work through a little bit. And the reason we did what we did is because this thing is still glued, still kind of fresh. Overnight, this stuff will be totally set, but you don't have to wait overnight. Camera crew, would you be so kind as to hold right mm -hmm. there? Just a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna actually use scissors. I think it's time to commit to some shelf liner. What about you? Okie dokie. The shelf liner can be in there because we know that we're gonna try to put the receiver in the front. Okay. Okay. Um, if you weren't sure about that, you could make a different decision. Okay. Shelf liner, super easy to put in, super easy to take out. All I have to do is just rip it out of there if I make a decision different. Okay. Ordinarily, we would take this Velcro and stick it down. And then on the back side of the Velcro, we would just stick that on top of it. Then you can pull this thing off and then you can stick the Velcro to your battery if your buddy has a battery you're borrowing that does have Velcro, or you can just leave this on there and then put the smooth side of the battery that doesn't have Velcro in that position. We have found that batteries that have Velcro tend to get hot a little quicker. They tend to give you more problems. It's not like a huge thing. So I don't want you guys to read too much into it, but it's a preference thing, and that's my preference. You may not agree with it, and that's fine. You don't have to agree with it. You can do it your way and I'll do it my way and then everybody is happy. Okay, so you'll see where that sits. There's nothing magical about that. I think it's okay. Now, if you had double-sided tape, you could use double-sided tape, but what I have historically done now, I sh probably shouldn't do it because this is getting pretty low. But this stuff here works really nice for this, this step if you use this step. Now, these aluminized tubes, just be aware if you do that to kind of get all the glue to the front, it may want to seep out as soon as I open. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself prepared to have a paper towel ready to catch all the gooey stuff that comes out. It's a good idea. It is a good idea. All right, so these straps and everything have been in the way this whole time. And you do tend to run into that, but still it's kind of annoying. Ah, popped off again. The system I came up with didn't work as good as I would like it to. Okay, now I am just gonna kind of go centered because either it's gonna go back here or it's gonna go forward because I'm wrong. And either way, we'll hit some of it. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. You're like, but Brian, you just open the radio and then you jump back onto this. That's right. I made a decision. Welcome to Brian Phillips RC. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. This is- You don't need much. No, you just need a little teeny bit. And then I would normally use a Q-tip to spread it out.
because you don't need tons of contact on this because as soon as your battery's in there, it's gonna hold it down anyway. Right. Um, but this is just kind of to hold it while you're loading the battery, which is like the most frustrating part of uh, aircraft ownership <laughs> is the period of time from when you have tried to remember what battery size it is, where it goes, and what one you forgot to charge, and then actually putting it in the mm -hmm. hole. That's the most frustrating period. So then I can just kind of fold this like taco style. Taco, taco so good. We had crunch wraps for lunch. Isn't that close enough? Are crunch wraps a copyrighted item? We had, um, I don't think so. Are you sure? I don't know. I don't know. That's what the recipe's called. Really? The recipe's probably illegal. It's all right, I'm so glad you're breaking the law. <laughs> All right, so getting back to the point, we have a transmitter and we have a radio. These are gonna to need to be paired up, okay? But before we do that, we don't even have these plugged in. We, oh. We're gonna to have to have these on there to CG it. Well, so oh. really at this point, it's like mm. chicken or egg is killing me. Yeah. So we don't know where anything pl plugs in yet either because we haven't set up the radio setup. So guess what we get to do now? We get to lay this in here so that it stops threatening to flip over. And then we're gonna let go of that. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to set up this Spectrum AR 631. Now, real quick question. Yeah. Why would you not use an AR 630 on this model? You could, for sure. It would work great. It would. In fact, it'd probably be better. Better, yeah. Because the external antenna costs you like five bucks more. And it's really, you know, at first when I got them, I thought, oh my goodness, like how stupid do you think we are, Spectrum? Like no antenna is gonna work just as good. Well, you know, on a plane like this, the human eye can only see so far. Yeah. So if you have a flyaway and you expect to be able to control it when it's like three counties away from where you can see, then you'd be right, you'll lose signal. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you this right now, we have not seen a, any difference between the AR630 and the 631. And we've used a number of both. The other thing is the AR630 has end pins, which would be nice in this application yeah. too. So just keep that in mind. Maybe what we'll do is we will link to the 630 so you guys can save a couple of bucks and have the benefit of the end pins. The end pins, of course, in this application would be nice because mm -hmm. you could do that and it would just be perfect. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> alternatively, you know, it is a little bit tempting to see if this thing would fit like here. I just don't think I'm gonna get lucky because honestly, this antenna, maybe that's what we need to be doing. But look at the angle though. Uh, yeah. Look at this angle. Cause this is not true to the length of the plane. That would be true. Mm -hmm. You can make up for that, but I just don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not. It makes me nervous. Yeah. And I don't wanna make it hard to get batteries in. It kind of does flatten out there. We could probably get away with that. That might not be a bad, bad spot. We're gonna have to test the CG though. That's but then the also way. look, this gets so thick there. Ooh. So that's gonna hit, so we'd have to put that down low and then the battery is gonna be obstructed. So I don't know if you guys have connected the dots yet, but really, we're nervous about this position, okay? Because we are gonna be limited on length and we're gonna be limited on a, you know, if we're gonna be blocking the battery or not. We could go vertical probably, because look, that narrows. But no, we can't, we're gonna have to be flat. Okay, well anyway, sorry, enough waffling for right now. Turn on your transmitter. Okay, so this is the part where the radio setup really happens, okay? Uh, as you can see, we got the J65 Twin 70 from XFly, which is pretty sweet. That's what's sitting over there. Mm -hmm. If you guys ever see a video and you think, I would love to do what you did on that XFly with this particular free wing, for instance, something maybe we haven't gotten to, um, or this, this other you know, plug and fly plane that you got because you know, your buddy was using Futaba and you bought it off of him. You could go back and look at a similar plane and copy the radio setup almost verbatim. You're gonna have some gain, you know, differences here and there, but you just work, those are preference issues anyway, okay? So you can do the basic stuff. Okay, so when you're ready to select a new model, always get in the habit of having your throttle cut on, having your stick down all the way. I'm gonna click back and cancel. And then I'm gonna go to add new model. I'm gonna go to create, that's an acro. 
You can create whatever type you want, but an acro is the correct one for what we're doing here. The most complex models, by the way, are sailplanes. And yes, it does take that long. Okay, then model select would take you back to where we just made the new, micro, uh, the new acro. This is model type. That's where you would change if you wanted to go to a different type. It will reset everything. And then model name. So this is 114 colon space, and then it says acro, the word acro. Okay, I'll lay those right there, Kim Okay. I'm gonna close the model. It's the Twin 50 SU27 by XFly. So now I am using the legacy keyboard. Full disclosure, we do have our firmware up to date, but we like the legacy keyboard. So we'll be right back after we type that in. All right, so we have the SU27 Twin 50 from XFly. And it's gonna beep weird. Aircraft type, this is where you set up your wing. So it's not gonna be normal, it's gonna be flapper on. Then the tail is gonna be set up as normal and you're like, but Brian, there is no rudder. Well, there is a rudder, it's the steer wheel nose gear, okay? And I'm gonna change this image to something that's more suitable like that. And then we have to do a setup for flight mode so we can switch in and out of safe. Okay, now let's talk about the switches. We have no retracts, so ordinarily we would do safe and AS3X here. We would do flaps here. And then we would save this for if we had retracts that would disallow us from using this. Now the catch is you can do three positions. You could have safe on or AS3X on, then nothing, then uh, AS3X and safe. So you have an off condition in the middle, which is kind of nice for some people. So you may always defer to D. I'm gonna defer to A on this one just because even though I tend to take off and then turn on safe on accident, <laughs> which is super annoying. And I would suggest that you guys probably just go ahead and go with A. So that's what we're gonna do. So switch one, we'll switch it to switch A. And then there's only two modes that get switched, as you can see. And then I'm gonna go to next. And this is, you know, just more information, okay? And you can actually do a combination of multiple switches that have a matrix created. So like you can have switch A and switch D, which make a matrix of the multiple switch positions and combinations. Spoken flight mode. Okay, so this is where you would set up your audible alarm and you can also type what you want. Cancel, cancel. And in this case, this would be AS3X. Now this is not meaning that it's gonna be AS3X, it's just what I am going to ultimately later make that assignment to do. So right now, don't be confused with the label and the actual setting. This is a label that's readable. It is not the actual setting. And then you have to scroll all the way down about here. So we'll pause while we do that. Okay, so way down toward the bottom, AS3X mode. Now we can test it. AS3X mode. Flight mode two. Now we'll change this one. This one's gonna be safe. So again, just back or cancel, cancel. And then I can scroll in safe, which is um, just a label. It's just a human readable text label in this spot. And then what we're gonna do is we'll change the settings later to adapt to that switch position. Okay. So same thing, we gotta go from here all the way down. Okay, then we're selecting safe mode. Now we can test. Safe mode. AS3X mode. Now once you get into the regular mode, it's just gonna read it out loud as you switch, which is kind of cool. And you could do the same thing with your flaps and all that stuff, but we don't go into all of it. We just wanna show you how to do it and then you will have the skills for when you wanna set it up yourself. Okay, so now the radio is on. You can tell because that orange light comes on and you can tell where everything needs to be plugged in because you have throttle, right aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, left aileron. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So gear in this case Safe mode. is gonna actually not be gear. Okay. Throttle cuts on. So we'll go through the regular setup now. So dual rates and expo, this is just standard stuff. We always set it up the same way. Switch F is right here. I like going to this setting and I'll do a low setting for expo. Then I'll do what I expect to run at, which is double of the low. And then the high expo, meaning the most deadened sticks, the most insensitive sticks. And I'm gonna exacerbate that with a lower rate. I'm gonna start here. If it's too touchy, I can go here. If it's not touchy enough, 
can go there. And then when I land, I make that my new middle and then double in half. That's double in half. So you always run in the middle. Okay. Then we can go from aileron over to elevator, go down here, assign it to switch F, change the first setting to five, the middle setting, that's the setting you're gonna take off in, and then the top setting to 20, reducing the rates down to about 90 in our case. Then I'm going to scroll from elevator to rudder. Make the assignment to switch F. Five for the top setting, which we probably will never fly. Then 10, then 20. You guys noticing a pattern yet? I hope you are, because it is a pattern. It's exactly the same. It's what we always do, and people ask me millions of times. Okay. And even though there's no rudder, <coughs> you still set it up, because then it's... There is a rudder. It's the steerable mode. Yeah. Differential, you can actually do differential with flap rounds. We're not gonna mess with that. But differential is like this. If you have two flaps, excuse me, ailerons, one of them goes up, one of them goes down. That is neutral. One of them goes up, one of them goes down. That's neutral differential. 100% differential would be one of them goes up, one of them holds still. One of them goes up, the other one holds still. So if you were to roll left, like you'd want the plane to do this, this would go up, this would stay still. Okay? This would go up, the plane would roll back and stay still. That'd be 100%. Now, minus 100% would be, you want to roll left, this would go down. You want to roll back right, this would go down. That would be negative 100% differential. Why? Why? Because there's a higher level of efficiency in rolling on the top as opposed to the bottom because there's... Um, basically more air molecules on the top moving faster than they are on the bottom, which is also how you produce lift. <laughs> so when the air goes over the wing, this one goes up to a tune of 25% differential means that this goes up 25% more than this one. This one goes up 25% more than this one. So you have a little bit more efficiency and a little bit, a little bit less adverse yaw that can be induced by the other ones. Okay, so getting back to the point. Throttle cut, turning that on with switch H. So switch H is on, and when you move the stick, you'll see that it's at minus 100, so you're safer in case you put something long and skinny into a hole that has a spinning, chopping motion going on. So it's similar to like the disposal. You don't wanna stick long, skinny things in there unless you wanna lose them. Okay, throttle cuts off. You can see it would now chop the long skinny thing off. Throttle cuts on. Okay, going back. Flap system. Let's make an assignment for switch B. Okay, I don't know where things need to be, but generally with flap rounds, you're gonna have minus 100 and plus 100, just like flaps. You have to keep in mind that plus 100 and minus 100 on an aileron, okay? So, Plus 100 on flaps would usually be all the way down. Minus 100 would be neutral because your flaps servo is only gonna throw one direction and then it's gonna bring it back to home position. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit beyond, but you're gonna basically function is gonna go down only, okay? On a flapper on, because it's an aileron and a flap, then it's gonna go up and down so that Zero or minus 100 is going to be up as in spoiler on. Zero is going to be neutral and negative 100 is going to be down or vice versa. You never really know until you do it and then you check it and you see which direction they go because they might have a reverse servo involved. And anyway, it's neither here nor there. The point is this you can do spoiler ons and get better results on some planes, generally when they're outboard flapper ons meaning they're out there, not inboard flaps that also act as ailerons. These will work good as flapperons because they're inboard, in my opinion. Okay, so getting back to the point, sorry for that extravaganza. All right, so the next step is, because we don't know what direction they go, I'm just gonna set like 50 and like minus 50. And just because we don't know, okay? Now also, flapperons sometimes call for an opposite 
response on this. Normally you would set that to like a positive value on a spectrum setup. So it might be like six and then 10, right? Well, in our case, you don't want any correction here. But the problem is when we go to center our elevator, we don't want that to, because we're gonna start in the center since we don't want to damage the flap runs. So I'm gonna actually clear the elevator correction on the middle setting. So there should be no impact on our elevator right here. Do you understand what I meant there? Because mm -hmm. we have to mechanically install these linkages. Mm -hmm. And so if we install the linkages and we don't have the elevator in the central position, that's gonna be a problem. Right. Okay. All right, so now walking out and we don't need mixing. And then they said like five, like three to eight minutes or something. What did three they say? Three to five, maybe. Uh, I think it was on the box. Do you see it in there? Hmm. Do not expose the electronic components to moist environments. Oh, well. Uh, wait, go back. The timer should be in that. Well, it depends on if it's designed to be moist. Um, most things <clears throat> aren't. Well, Don't if it only around. runs for three to six minutes, and it's designed to be moist. <laughs> disturbing three to six minutes is not very long but if you're doing okay so this has 40 amp escs yeah i'm just gonna go with three minutes to yeah. be on the safe side so three minutes with a one out active that means that when i go over 25 percent, it's gonna start counting at one minute i'm gonna do a voice i kind of like that lately 20 seconds i'm inhibiting 10 seconds i want voice i want to count down expiration i want tone and vibrate and then a tone every minute thereafter. Just need something else to ignore. Mm-hmm. Throttle cuts on. Everything's ready to rock. Okay, cool. So now that we know where everything goes, I can literally click over one screen and there you can tell where to plug things in. Yeah. So we're just gonna skip the gear one because there's no gear plugged in. Right. Okay. So looking close with me, you can see we have the aileron is right here. That's the one that we built. So aileron one. Now, how do you tell what direction that plugs in? You look right here, it's got a little S plus and minus, S plus and minus, S plus and minus. So signal goes right there. Signal on any of these cables, it's either gonna be the light color, either yellow or white. The red's always gonna be red, and this is gonna be black or brown. So signal in this case, that's on channel two is the right aileron. It's gonna go, that's channel two, not channel one. There's a bind plug here, which we don't use. Bind slash program. Is that the one that you built? And that's the one we cut. So that'll be the other one. So that goes up on channel one, two, three, four, five, six. So on channel six. Now you can flip flop those if you want the behavior of your ailerons to go the other direction because the output of those are opposite now. Right. Okay. And I'm trying to get them so they're not twisted weird. Because I hate when wires are twisted weird. It just irritates me. We have usually pretty clean installs, I think. Okay, elevator. There's two servos on the elevators. And that needs to go on uh, pin number three, port number three, split, see? And then this one is, uh, who knows, that must be throttle. And then rudder goes on channel four, okay? Just gonna feed this through, make sure we're not tangled. Brown needs to go toward my belly. So I'm gonna put this in. Okay, now this, we're gonna drop down. That must be our throttle because it's a little thicker cable. Our cat is trying to dig a hole to get a drink, as mm. you can see. See, just doing a little digging, looking for water. She had her Geiger rods out earlier. Oh wait, that's a real thing, Geiger. What am I thinking of? Dowsing rods. There you go. Okay, so that's the way that's gonna plug in. Pretty simple, pretty clean. And now that we have not got end pins, you can see my, my concern about where this is gonna reach. Mm -hmm. Dang. Um, shoot. That definitely needs to stick down there. And this definitely is gonna have to be up here. There's no doubt about it. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna just commit to something and go with it. We could also take an X-Acto knife and carve that foam 
and set that in a little bit. What do you think of that? Kind of like that. But is then it's going to be a nightmare to get to that if I have to work on it. I know. Because I was going to say upside down and in. But that's you mean also. Like right here? Yeah. Okay. I know it's awkward there too. Let's just try getting this antenna in there. And let's see how bad that is. Because I actually don't hate your idea. I think it's a good idea. Of course it is. Um, yeah. Oh, but your pin's. I think we're gonna, yeah, we're getting pretty tight there. Ooh, that might actually be perfect. Do you I'm gonna have to get to the bind plug too. Now no. we can't just stuff it in there, guys. It has to be fixed. Has to be fixed because it's a stabilized receiver. Can we bind it yes. and then put it in? Yes, but <clears throat> we could also do this. Yeah. That's another idea. Let's try that first before we get too excited. I just don't know. Yeah, I do with your antenna though. Yeah, the antenna's not as bad. You can definitely get up past that. Ooh, that might work. Did I unplug my wire there just now? Can't help but feel like I did. That's gonna be like, I can definitely get to yeah. it. Okay, that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, okay, so in order to stick this down, because the nature of its position, I am going to defer to ah oh man do you use velcro because i could always jank it off of one of these later i think whatever double-sided tape thickness yeah yeah it's got to be double-sided tape because if i do velcro and that falls down i won't have a clue no okay so these double-sided tapes are really good for stuff like this this one looks like it'll be easy to use so it'll probably be terrible yeah it'll probably be horrible all right, so let's just uh, take this. So guys, if you enjoy watching us struggle through these builds <laughs> and you think I could do it better, I'm gonna start my own YouTube channel. Go for it, guys. It's YouTube, it's free country. But I must warn you, it's much harder than it looks. So if you wanna help support us, buy the plane from the link in the video description below. We've got links to both the plane, the receiver, and the battery, and we try to do that for all the different things we do. Whether it be a toilet plunger or... We've never done any of those. We haven't done a toilet plunger. I don't think I can get any there. Leaf blower, e-bike. I still love the leaf blower and we, the e-bike. We do love the e-bike and we do love the leaf blower. And we our, use both like almost weekly. And our scooter, our e-scooter. We use the car. I've already got like 24 miles on that. I know. On that bike. Many. And that's just like going back and forth in our own yard. Yeah. Super fun. Emptying our disgusting bug ca pet catcher. Oh, that's we right. Show them the. Did we, did we do a video no. about that? We need an exacto knife. Ooh, this is like terrible. Oh man, I'm like annoyed with this thing now. Okay, well, I think we have our answer. Ding, 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 gone. Thank you for coming. That didn't work. That was terrible, guys. See, sometimes when you keep things for 27 years, it no, end these up things, better. these things sucked when they were new, too. Um, sticks to my finger just fine. Right, of course. It doesn't stick to the receiver quite the same. All right, well, I guess we're going to go to one of these. So these ones are also a little bit challenging to use too, if I remember right. But I've always been able to get these. Double-sided 3M tape generally is like the best bet, but it's also like super expensive. Now, why do we have this like foam tape? Why not just glue? You can glue these in, but generally you want a little bit of a uh, vibration isolation so you don't have a response to just every single tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little thing. Okay, and this is where I gotta reach real far back, get past the servo, and then hope it's somewhat square. Okay, all right, so now That's this, I am going to, yeah, that was pretty good actually. This, I wanna protect. Okay, it is an antenna, it is important. And I wanna go up here and I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do. I've done this before in the past and it takes a couple seconds longer to do it this way, but it's really not hard. 
And so I'm showing you the way I would ordinarily do this, okay? This is an X-Acto knife, it's sharp. I'm gonna literally cut a channel that's about, mm, I don't know, two millimeters deep. Just a channel, nothing special. Yes, it is definitely weakening the strength of the plane, but by minuscule amounts, and guess what? It's worth it when considering the benefits of having a strong and protected antenna. So then what I do is I follow up with a screwdriver, it's in this case not a super small one, and I just, I go at an angle so that I can slide it down in there, okay? Just like that, super simple. And then I just follow up with the antenna. And you do want to be a little bit careful with this next step. You want to make sure you don't damage it. This is a coax cable, so it's like two media pieces. There's the wire inside, and then there's actually um, like a insulated section, and then there's actually a shield around it. And then all but the last 28 point something millimeters is gonna be covered up by that shield. And then when it gets down here, there's a last little bit to expose. So that's the active portion of the antenna. And that has to do with maximizing the wavelength of the protocol that we operate within in the 2.4 gigahertz world. Okay, so really what I want is I want that to slide down in there and it's just really not going for me. And I've had this problem before too. So generally what I do is I grab a different screwdriver and see if I get better luck. I've got a Phillips here and I've got a flat. And if it doesn't go this time, then I'll just tape it in anyway. So you just wanna be super careful that you don't pinch or cut the cable. So that's part of the reason why this is tough because I'm actually being quite careful. You could force it in there and throw a caution to the wind and be no problem. Okay, so then I'm just gonna take some tape and cover it up and I'll show you what that looks like. It's really literally about the simplest part of this build. And then that's buried in there. So when you're putting the battery in and out, you don't have to worry about the battery bumping it or getting it yanked out or anything like that. Okay. Super simple. It does take a couple of minutes, so that's kind of a regrettable aspect of this, but see, now of course, feels like it's going, but then it doesn't ever really stay. So then as I get even remote purchase, I just tape over the top of it. So guys, you get the idea, so I'm just gonna tape over this last little bit and we'll come right back. Okay, so we got the antenna done and we have Cash, we have Ash, our cat. <laughs> sleeping here. And we know the internet loves cats, so we figured we couldn't resist sharing our cat pictures. So getting back to the point. Okay, so now that we have that antenna uh, taped in, it, it doesn't look anything too incredibly crazy, but as you can see, it's taped into the wall, so it's actually gonna be nice and well protected as we uh, vigorously try to ram it in the hole. That is the battery. Mm -hmm. And we'll, you know, it'll be fine, because then we don't have to worry about that. now. What's the next step with radio setup? Because remember, we made that neutral setting on the flaps. Ordinarily, I would have the flaps like in this back position. But since we have a neutral position programmed right now, we're gonna put it in the middle. Throttle cuts on, sticks down, timer set, not that it matters. We're gonna go ahead and put the battery into the hole as though we're gonna fly this plane. Now, if you guys are watching this at home and you're thinking, how is it that it took you longer to build this plane than it did to build the L65? Or the J65, I always yeah. say it wrong. Why? Why did it because, take longer? Yeah, because this plane needed glue together and it's also a simpler plane and we wanted to add features like flaperons. Mm -hmm. So just bear in mind, when you guys are looking at the cost of a plane and if you're in a similar situation in life to where Megan and I are, which is you literally don't have enough time to do anything because you're so busy all the time and you've got four kids and you're constantly busy and you don't mind spending a little extra money then I seriously want to mention this to you. Sometimes when you're getting the more economical choice than the bigger, less economical choice, and it seems counterintuitive because it's like more expensive plane, does not necessarily mean harder to build. Something that was 
unusual to realize as we've gone through this process of reviewing many, 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 many planes. Yeah. Sometimes the more expensive planes, the more complicated planes are actually easier to build because the manufacturer does more of the work. But then other times the more expensive planes are just still terribly tedious. So it just depends on plane. Yeah. So I just, I was going to point that out. That's something we've learned an observation we've, we've learned. Okay. So the battery is in the hole. I don't know if it's right, but just look how tidy this looks, guys. That looks really nice. It looks very clean. It's very easy to get to things. I can definitely reach back and massage the button. And I can definitely get to the batteries and plug it in. So that's our next thing we're going to do. Okay. We're going to click and scroll down to this bind spot. And I'm going to hit yes when it's ready. Okay. So remember, duck if it flies at you. Just, okay. just kidding, guys. It's not going to do that. So it's plugged in. Bind. Yes. Bind. It's trying to bind. Wish that would last longer. So I'm putting my finger in there, pressing the bind button, hoping it's working. Now there's no dance. That's because we haven't set anything up yet. Okay, so now we've got steerable nose gear. We've got elevators are not hooked up. We have ailerons, flaps, no delay, no setup on that. So we're in the neutral position. Now that this is on and functioning, we can go ahead and get the elevators installed. But we can also, it's funny how all this stuff comes together at like the exact same time. Yeah. You see this hole? That hole was well thought, well thought out. Because look where your wires are going to be. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Amazing, guys. Yes. I'm telling you, XY has thought of a lot of stuff that other manufacturers may not have thought of. And so we are very happy because as these manufacturers have been refining the process of building these foamies, we've been the benefactors. Okay, so now that we are flipping this plane upside down again, we have to be mindful that we're not going to lay it down in a way that's going to break off our back end. So we're just setting it there. Now let's show them where we're working there, cam crew. We are definitely working on the elevators. Mm -hmm. Okay, now in order to do this process, you're probably going to need um, some sort of a, you know, either alignment pliers or needle nose pliers. I'm gonna go with needle nose this time. Okay. Do I need to close this window for you? Probably. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I just close them both because the sun's gonna start setting. All right, guys. So. We've got two options here. Oh shoot, you know, the manual tells you where to stick these. Oh. And I didn't pay attention. No, we didn't look. So the manual suggests putting, um, there's one half that's on a ball joint that's already installed, so you don't have to worry about that. But then the other half, it suggests for the elevator that it goes into the second hole from the top down. Okay, so they want us to go in this one right here. And it doesn't look like we have to open up the hole at all, that's nice. And you can twist it in and take it out. Wow. Wow, that's like. That's crazy. Like it's actually lined up. What are the chances? Nah, it's not. Not that's that good. Pretty close. Pretty darn though. close. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna hold on to this and then I'm gonna spin this in. And all I'm doing is just spin it until it gets it to where it's level. And then I hold this and I look. And yep, it's still down a little bit. So you're gonna have to show them from the other angle there here pretty sick. You get about one turn. One half a turn at a time is all the adjustment you get with ball joints. Show them from this side. Come around here and kind of shoot the camera at here so we can show them what we're talking about. You hold this into the center. You see how it's lined up. It could probably go another half. Mm -hmm. and I bet we're going to overshoot this time. But let's show them what it, what it looks like. Okay, so there's another half. How about now? Pretty perfect. Mm. That's pretty good still. Okay, that's where it's going. Now, we have tools to do this, but I'm just gonna use the needle nose pliers because I can. Okay, no problem there. And then I can take my transmitter and just go elevator. Ooh, beautiful. Now I'm gonna rotate the whole plane just so I can get to the other side. And you can probably stay right where you are there. It mm -hmm. should work. Second hole in from the end. Support, slide it in. And what the heck? So close again, awesome. Okay, so holding this, I'm gonna put this in one turn. Line it up with the hole. Nope, not there yet. Ooh, 
That looks like it's going up just a hair. That one looks like it's, yeah, really dang close to the center. Nope, it needs to go in another half a turn. There's half a turn more, and this is just guess and check, guys. That's good. It's as close as we're gonna get it. Then I'm just gonna pop this on. If you don't have needle nose pliers, you can also use, or if you have a ball joint tool, you can use a ball joint tool. And the ball joint tool does make that slightly easier. Now there's also paint on my balls. Mm. So we're, we're gonna have to rub them off. Really? Yeah, Why? Show, them. show them a close up. I know, why? Because the paint can interfere with the movement oh. on my balls. Okay, see, so watch. Okay, pretty good. All right, so let's show the people both at the same time. So elevator back, that would go up and down. Cool. And then ailerons. Now, we're not gonna test any more upside down because that's just a good way to confuse yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a veteran skilled pilot, trust me, don't do it. I'm hardly a veteran skilled pilot. I might be a semi-skilled pilot, but I'm not a veteran, that's for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the plane pointed away from me so that I can not confuse myself. Don't let your ego get the best of you. If you try to shortchange yourself in this step or steps like it, you'll likely end up with a crash and then you'll be very upset with yourself because it's easy to make a mistake when you've got a plane upside down, okay? Y'all left. Oop, backward, okay? Did you see that? You were in a perfect spot to film that before. You see the y'all left? Can you show them? Oh. It's like I'm trying to y'all left, look what's happening. It's going right, okay? So there's y'all right, y'all left. So that's obviously backwards. So the first step we're gonna do is go to servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse, and change the rudder, okay? So now I'm gonna y'all left, y'all right. And also I'm noticing that that's not very well centered. So we're gonna try to do that now because obviously I don't want a taxi like that. And I don't wanna make big adjustments and lose that much play. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna see <clears throat> if there's a way to mechanically trim it. Now, how do you manic, show them inside of there. See if you can figure out, is there a way to mechanically trim that? Guess or answer for me if you think there yeah. is. Okay, how do you think You're we're gonna, gonna do it? You're gonna have to unscrew. That's what I was thinking The too. actual servo arm, the white servo arm and put it to the next spline, like counterclockwise. Spline probably. position? Yeah. Yep, and then you and I are probably mm. in agreement that that's gonna be more likely to give us a centered position. But remember guys, there is only so much adjustment on this style. Can, can you? Hmm, I could also. Underneath though? Oh no, don't do that. Why? That's plastic there. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's good. I know. Yeah, but look how I'm not gonna make that angle, I don't think. Anyway, oh, I should show the people. Okay, let's see if I can get it out of there. Okay, so it's out of, oh, we have a receiver there too. Oh crap. Where did it go? Okay, hold on, I'm gonna move the. The plane, I think it went up here, didn't it? Or where did it go? I think it went down. No, it went down, right. I see it, I see it. It's right here. I definitely see it. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. The screw dropped, so I gotta get the screw out. Watch like a hawk. <laughs> you know where it went? Oh, Onto the magnet. Perfect. Sweet, okay. So now that that's released, I'm thinking forceps is the only option, right? Yeah, because you don't want to have to take that metal linkage out, right? Yeah. I think four steps is the only option. Yeah, I agree. So why are we doing all this? To get this landing gear to be so pointed forward. Straight. Okay. Mm. So there's always going to be a little bit of play here. Now, you could undo this set screw, but then the flats, they are set. You can't rotate them a little bit. It just, it doesn't work. The only way to rotate them a little bit is if they leave them around and then you never get a good bite mm -hmm. with your set screw. I don't know that this is gonna be enough, cam crew. Or it's gonna be too much, too much. you're gonna have the problem, yeah. yeah. Just even more the worse the other way. That was awesome the way that popped off of there and fell right in a terrible spot. Super cool. Reminds me of what just happened with that screw 30 seconds ago. Okay, so as you can see, 
we're trying to make that work. I'm gonna try to put that on. I don't see that spline movement helping. You see? Yep, it's gonna just be too far the other way. Yep, so it was as centered as it was gonna get. Dang, that sucks. Yeah. So that means the only option is to trim it, uh, trim it with trim. And that's just the way it is, and you're just, we're just gonna have to be happy about it. But that's why people watch, because now they don't have to do that themselves. Not necessarily, that's true. They don't necessarily have to do that themselves now. So if you're here on Brian Phillips RC and we helped you out and you wanna help us out, buy the planes from the links in the video description below. It's the easiest way you can financially support us. If you don't like doing that or you don't like this plane or you've already got this plane and you're just watching for help, another thing you can do is smash the like button, obviously. Click the bell for notifications so you know about new footage that we've got coming out all the time and we do have it all the time. Where did that screw go? It's did back it? by the aileron tag. Oh, I it's see it. back in there, see it? Mm-hmm. That son of a blizz cat. So the other thing you can do to help us is obviously come back and watch the videos. <sighs> why would it be, why would it be magnetically attached to the because tip? Because. Why would it possibly it do that? So if you like watching us struggle through these processes and you would like to help throw us a bone, just buy the plane from the links in the video description below. Obviously come back, watch the videos, click the bell for notifications. And if you don't wanna buy the planes, we've also got Patreon and PayPal in the video description below. If you're watching on a mobile device, it might be a little harder to get there. You have to expand that thingy doohickey. And then we have links that will help you navigate to all those different choices. Okay, so as you can see, now we have to come up with another solution for the nose gear. That is a bummer because nose gear that are not straight will make it very hard to take off a plane wheels up, wheels down. Also, you may note that I allowed my wheel to spin around. Do you see that? How do we do that? I don't know, probably when I was like doing all that screwing around. Mm. But that's fine, let's look at it real close. Still having to be careful not to grab the tail mm. right now. Okay, so you see this? The other thing you could do is you could actually grab hold of this and then you could bend it. But I think what I'm gonna do is, this is an unusual thing for me to do. I'm just gonna trim it with the, with the rudder trim. Nope, wrong way. Hey, no, no, you can't go there. Just stay, stay where you are there. That's pretty much perfect. And mm -hmm. that's all my trim. Oh. So. Now, when I go to taxi, it should taxi relatively straight, but maybe not perfect. And that means I have a little bit more movement one way than the other, which is one of the big drawbacks to having to do that much trim. Also, some would argue that AS3X cannot respond, but that is incorrect because AS3X will respond even with massive trim adjustments, especially since we haven't set it up yet. So it's not gonna know any better. I mean, it might know, but it doesn't respond to that. Right. So, covers on. We are ready to do the first time AS3X setup. Let's verify our controls again. Okay, we have elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Yaw left, yaw right. So we're good to go. And then throttle is, ooh, that's some good power for 4S. Nice. Wow, that's gonna be sweet. Okay, so clear the timer. All the controls are going the right direction. Let's look at flaps now. I wanna change my speed to two seconds. Okay, now let's look at the flaps. There's, that's obviously wrong and that's obviously wrong, okay? So we want, we're gonna be operating within the plus band if we want regular flaps. So I'm gonna put this to like, uh, let's do like 32 and then we'll do like 100 here. Okay, then this one, we're gonna set to zero. Yeah, let's do 30 so it's clean. So there's your regular flight mode. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Take off flaps, landing flaps. And our correction is backward. No, it's not, it's correct. So there's six and 10. You might be done on that. 
I honestly don't think I'm gonna mess with it at all. I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. If it's not enough, then we will make corrections in the field, like we always have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's something to be said for plug and fly planes. Guys, if you're new to the hobby, you don't know what you're doing, come to Brian Phillips RC, copy what we do, but pay attention to the maiden flight. The maiden flight is where we make adjustments to all these different settings that we've put in here. If you're watching the maiden flight first to, de to, to determine if you wanna fly a plane, like, hey, does it look like it's, it's easy to fly? And, and, which looks can be deceiving. I can make it look easy sometimes, and maybe sometimes I can look, make it look hard, but it just depends on the plane. And I just wanna warn you about that because skill and time in the air, on the sticks, flying airplanes makes uh, a big difference, okay? So, and again, not trying to toot my own horn at all, but I'll make it look easier than you might think if you're a brand new pilot. Sometimes when we make things look easy and I forget how hard it was when I was brand new. Yeah. I try not to forget because I'm always trying to train my kids and stuff like that. And I realize how quick um, those six or seven years of experience really stack up, okay? So secondly, watch the maiden, desire you know, is gonna be you know, up or down on a plane, make your decision. Then go back and watch the full radio setup, go through the full thing, watch everything, listen to all the stupid comments, the jokes about ball sacks and things like this, ball, uh, nut, and, nut and bolt sacks, sorry, wrong, wrong thing, uh, ball joints. And just pick up on all of it because there's a lot of details that get mixed into that. You know, and it's not gonna say, go watch this one video to hear about expo. Go watch this one video to hear about flaps. Go watch this one video to hear about, you know, like radio setup. That's not what's gonna go on. Every plane has different tidbits. So maybe find this plane, find another plane somewhere. Watch the whole thing. Waste an entire couple hours. It's gonna be a good couple hours spent, I promise. If you know nothing, I'm serious. Okay, now I wanna teach you another trick. See how far those servos are down? That doesn't look like as much deflection as I would like on a flap mm -hmm. for full landing flaps. So watch this, servo setup, travel. Flaps are on auxiliary two here, or excuse me, they're on here and here. Hundred and fifty percent, yeah, baby. I'm gonna back it off five percent, and that's for the sake of the stabilizer. It's probably not necessary, but look how much better the deflection mount is. That's good. I love it. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Now, if we decide we want spoilerons instead of flapperons, the spoilerons instead of flapperons would go up. Sometimes when I set up flap rounds on a plane, I'll set up flap rounds and spoiler rounds. So it'd be like one or the other. You just figure out which one works. Now, if you decide to do that, I'm gonna show you a trick, trick of the day. If you wanna do that, you can also go into mixing and you can make a new virgin mix, that's normal. And you can go flap to flap. And I think, I don't know which direction to put it, but we'll just show you uh, which way. So 100 plus 100 plus 100. I think it's gonna be minus 100 minus 100, but we'll just try it this way because I never know which way it is. And I'm gonna make it equivalent to when the switch is in the middle, okay? So there's nothing, then here it is, okay? So now when I have flaps on, watch what happens. Nothing, because I did this backward. You can also make the switch actually actuate it too, which is another way to do it. So this is switch uh, B. So when that, okay, so that might not work because of the nature of, does our offset work? Okay, so this might not work in the flapper on configuration. So we may have to do that as right aileron or left aileron, okay? Nothing there. There it goes. See what's happening? Mm -hmm. So I am trying to invert the output. Okay, so look, when I have this switch, it goes up a little bit but you can only make such a big adjustment. There we go. I'm gonna make it go all the way. See that? 
And you're probably thinking to yourself, why in God's green earth would you make it do that? Because then I can have spoilerons or flapperons. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how to do the other side. So it's B to right aileron. Now you might be able to do it like this too. This is probably the better way. Go to flap. I'm going to shut that off right now real quick so I don't damage it. There we go. It's a flap. There you go. But you also note that it stopped the other one from working. See? Mm -hmm. So I don't think we can do it. We're going to have to make the basis the switch. Switch B. Okay? So B to right aileron, rate of 125, offset of 100, only active when the switch is in the middle. Okay? So now we just have to do the same thing. Normal. We'll make the input B. And we'll make the output, instead of right aileron, it'll be left aileron. And then I don't know which side it's going to be on. I assume it's on the same side, but I don't know. So we'll just click in a little bit. We'll just click up a little bit. It's probably going to be backward. Put it to switch C. Set it so it's only active in that position. So now take off flaps. So now I want this one. No. See, it's moving that one. And I'm adjusting the left aileron versus the right aileron. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is something that you'll run into sometimes. So I'm going to clear that. I'm going to see if I can go plus or minus here, but it's probably going to move that other aileron. See, no activity, nothing's happening. It's moving over there. So why would it move the same one? Because we have it saying left aileron and we just did the other one on the right aileron. That's because of the way the receiver calls it out. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm just going to clear all this crap. And I'm going to show you another way. So that's one of the reasons why we like Spectrum is that there's a relatively intuitive mixing method, but every once in a while you run into weird stuff like that, okay? So generally with flap runs too, I found, okay? So in this setting, flaps work as usual. In this setting, flaps work as usual. All I'm trying to do is make a middle setting where the flaps behave differently. Now the ailerons are still gonna work no matter what. Ailerons are still gonna work no matter what. Ailerons are still gonna work no matter what. But what I wanna do is I wanna make the output from the flap opposite, okay? So we're gonna pause, I'll figure it out and come right back and show you how to do it. Okay, so every once in a while we run into a situation like this. So B is now attached to left aileron. This is the only mix I did. The rate is 125, offsets 100, both plus. And then I have it on when the switch is in the middle position of C instead of the top position. So let's watch what happens. So in the top position, we have normal takeoff flat behavior, landing flat behavior, and then back to neutral. In this setting, you have upward and even further upward. So you basically have flat rounds and spoiler rounds. And all you have to do is flip one switch, but you'll note that weird behavior See that? So that's one thing I've never really known exactly how to resolve. Okay? So really, when in doubt, what you would normally do is you would just deploy your flaps, you'd do what you're normally doing, and instead you would just kind of know there might be a hokey transitional state. Okay? So I show you that because it's kind of interesting to see how that works. The other thing too is what's nice is you can actually set up a third function where you go in here, you set up normal and you go to B and then you make it control the left aileron again and you just basically stack on top of that even more. So let's say there's another 50 and let's make it only when switch C is in the all the way down position here, okay? and you can disable the other two. Then in this one, you can come back in and you can disable in that one and you can disable in that one. So your normal flaps go down, then they go down further. That's takeoff and landing. And there's your normal flight mode. Then you would have spoilers, further spoilers, 
and that should get you more, but instead what it does is it brings it back down, which is kind of weird, okay? So you see what's going on? We're gonna go past center, and then we're gonna go offset past center even more. You see how they're all the way up now. But it seems to be the same. Every once in a while you run into weird stuff like that. So basically the second mix doesn't really add anything to it and I just wanted to show you why that would be or not so much show you why that would be because really I don't know why it is but it's the way it is. Also if you inhibit your switch configuration you can't actually clear out the mixing. Okay so now that's fully inhibited there is no function. Now we have spoiler ons or normal mode with flat runs. Okay, now I'm basically gonna do it one time and see what it does. If I like the behavior, I'll just change the whole flat mode to work the way that works better. I'm not gonna really need both on this plane. But sometimes it's cool to get a really high speed pass. I'll put takeoff flap on and then I'll go into spoilers and that'll actually make your plane sometimes a little bit slippery. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so now that we've set up all that stuff, I wanna talk about first time setup for AS3X and then first time setup for safe. So now that we've confirmed, we've tested everything, it's all working, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right, everything's working, throttle cuts on, throttle is working, now we can go into forward programming and set up our first time AS3X setup, which is super easy, gyro settings. First time setup. Make sure the model has been configured, including wing type, travel, trims, all that stuff, okay? So we're done with all that. Now we need to set the model level and press continue. And then you have to set it on its nose, highlight continue and be ready to do this. Um, obviously, sometimes with planes, it's really easy to do this. And sometimes with planes, it's a real pain in the neck to do this. Okay, so now it's determined the direction that the receiver sits and let's show the people what they said. See, it's upside down. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's the way it sits in there. Okay, mm -hmm. so I believe that's right, but you never trust this setting. You always go in, you always double check it when you're done and you always verify. Because if something's wrong, guess who's gonna believe you? Not very many people. So, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left. Everything, everything's right, okay? So we can now continue. Gain channel. The knob is on auxiliary three, so I'm gonna go over here to this, and I'm gonna go down to aux three, and then hit done. And then I'm gonna apply. Radio's resetting. One dance. One dance, not two. Two is when safe is done. Okay, so now we can go back into forward programming. Gyro settings. Yes, 3X setting. Flight mode set up. Okay, remember you already set up the flight modes. So we have to tell it what channel it is. It's gonna be channel A. Remember, that's just, that is just an event. It's just a label. It's not mm -hmm. actually the setup, okay? I wanna select gear and hit next. AS3X is active. It's not actually safe mode yet, that's just a label. First time safe setup. Before setting up safe, a flight mode channel must be selected. It's already selected. See, and that made the assignment. I put it into the safe mode, so I have it pulled back toward me, which is where I want it. Not here, but here. Then I hit continue. So it's in flight mode three, even though it's in flight mode two. Yes, sir, games, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is where it's gonna test for attitude, for pitch, roll, minor corrections, like if you had it mounted at an angle like this. You can make that correction. No changes. Oh, one, okay, no big deal. Flight mode one, flight mode three, flight mode three. Okay, so safe is off, it says inhibited. Go in here, highlight, go to 
Ah, it's so annoying when it does that. There, that thing. Now safe mode's on. Apply, rebooting. Two dances. So that means safe is active and it may be on if we set up our switches right. So remember, I'm gonna back out of the menu from forward programming. Now I'm gonna go in and test. Elevator up, elevator down. Looks like a lot less throw to me. Roll left, roll right. Y'all left, y'all right. Now, look. Watch this, safe is on, safe is off. That's your first telltale sign that we have it set up right. Roll and AS3X is a lot, safe it's a lot less. Mm -hmm. Safe it's a lot less, there you go. But that's not the best way to tell between safe and AS3X. I believe still to this day, safe is best tested by flipping the plane upside down or looking at the control or, or look at the elevator. Is that trying to pull up on it? Mm -hmm. Is that trying to push your nose down? Okay, now let's check the other axis. As we roll, it's trying to roll back to level, but put it on its belly. Which way does it go? The quickest route, the quickest route to level. So it's gonna roll like this and get leveled out and you're done, okay? So now safe is working, AS3X is working, but now we just need to check the gains on AS3X. Okay, gains are currently attached to this knob. We are in 1x by default. 1x through 4x is the normal default. Uh, you, can, you can do quarter and half x as well. But in my experience, usually 1x is pretty good. Okay? I'm low on battery. Okay, throttle cuts off. We have to give throttle to activate AS3X. There's 50% throttle. Wow. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, Elvin. Air on up, air on down. Oh, we're in safe still. Because we're in safe, it's gonna correct for safe. Now I'm in AS3X. Elevator up, elevator down, I can't tell. Air on up, air on down. I can see, but you're not gonna be able to see. Obviously the rudder we're not gonna be able to see. Air on up, air on down. Because this is a flap on configuration, we must do some more testing than usual. So watch this. How do you do that? You go into forward programming, throttle cuts on, you go into throttle, you go into the uh, forward programming, gyro settings, AS3X settings, and you go down here to 1X and you change it to 4. Okay, now watch this. It's already active, so watch how much correction there is. As soon as I move this thing, I can see the elevator going up, up, down. I'm watching here, up, down. I can see up, down, and I am looking I am looking right at this spot. When I lift that wing up, I wanna see that aileron go up. Up, I wanna see it go down. Now I'm gonna look here. I wanna see that go up when I move up and down when I move down. Up, down. Why does that matter? Elevator up, elevator down. So I'm looking here, I'm just, I'm watching my, my eyes are lined up with a fixed point and I'm watching for change. Up, down. Why do we care? So you want to make sure it's correcting in the right direction. If it corrects in the wrong direction, as soon as the environment, like wind, blows this wing down, it is going to accelerate the interaction with the wind. Because you have two control surfaces now with SAFE and AS3X controlling them independently, you have to check both. If you have not flap around configuration, it's not an issue. So let's look at flaps. Take out flaps and landing flaps for exaggeration reasons. Oh, by the way, I can turn this up even more. Gain all the way up. All the way down. All the way up. Now watch. Even with flap runs, when I lift this wing, that one's gonna go up to counter. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Now elevator up, elevator down. Oh yeah, it's working. Rudder, rudder, of course there's no rudder movement, but there is steerable nose wheel. Okay, so the other thing you want to look at is you want to look at safe with flat deployment. Safe is on, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. You have to check all the surfaces individually when you do flat runs because if you have one wrong, it will counter your input so there is no net change. Or left, when you flip this upside down, when you flip it upside down,
simulate what it would do. Yep. So our AS3X is working, our safe is working, our flap rounds are working. Now let's just make sure we don't screw the pooch with our flip. Yep, works fine. So now let's see what happens. Same thing we got to do before. I'm going to go back to AS3X and I'm going to test my movement. Up, down. Okay, hold on. Up, down. See how it's moving the other way? It is resisting, but there's nowhere to go up. Elevator up, okay. Yep, mm -hmm. works fine. It's just that because the ailerons are both all the way up, they're locked. So if you move the wing up, you're not gonna see movement up here. You're gonna see movement over there to counter the roll down. Okay, common problem within flat rons and split rons. Okay, so we have all the different control systems working. We have them all vetted. But now we need to decide, do we want to be at 4X? I don't think we probably want to start on 4X. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it'll be too much. I want to set it so that it's in the middle. And our first flight goes well. So I'm going to set it from 4 to, to 1. And see, you see how it scrolls? So 0.25 all the way up to 4. And you can inhibit. Why would you inhibit it? Just turn off AS3X. Okay. So you see how it says 1X, 2X. It just fights you sometimes. So I click. Now we're at 1 times. You won't be able to see the change as much, and that's okay. I, my game, my aim is to make the gain, you know, plus or minus a couple of degrees off of center. If it's all the way down here at a quarter, I'll change it to half. If it's all the way up here at three quarters, I'll change it to two, and then that'll be closer in the middle. That's a weird spot if you get that, okay? But I wanna go from this model to that model to the next model that all have different gain settings but my default ends up being about the middle. That way, when I go from model one to model two to model three to model four, and I've forgotten that because we have so many of them, I know when I pick this up and I have this in that top position and I have that in the back position and this in the back position and this in the metal position and this pulled toward me and the G switch here and all the sticks neutral, when I start that plane, boom, I'm ready to go. And I don't have to wonder if I'm gonna crash the plane because I, what did I do on that plane? <laughs> what did I do on this plane? What setting did I need on this? You're not going to remember. Even if you got three or four planes, you're going to have a hard time remembering. You're going to think you're going to remember, and you're not going to remember. So anyway, everything is all done. Timer set. Alarms are set. Audible sayings are set. Labels are confirmed. Direction of travel is confirmed. Double confirmed. Double confirmed. Double confirmed. Double confirmed. Double confirmed. Double confirmed. Everything is working. Now, quick power test, throttle cut is off. This thing looks sweet, okay? I'm gonna hold it by the inboard portion of the wing and I'm gonna hold it sideways and I'm gonna give it some throttle. You're welcome. Wow. It's got some good power, not quite one to one. What do you expect from 4S? But that being said, Super excited for this plane. We got to look at CG. If you want to help support the channel, buy the planes from the links in the video description below. That's the best way you can support us financially. If you want to watch these videos, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notification. All those good things, like usual, are much appreciated. This is a skill level intermediate, by the way. Okay, where is the center of gravity listed? Right there. 105. Oh, jeez. Okay, 105 is a long way back. I hope we can reach with it. You, I, th I think so. I think they go to like 120. Do I want a blue marker probably? Yeah. Okay, so normally we do a, a little bump and I have a blue Sharpie here on my grab, but I have to think about the way we're gonna mark this, okay? With EDF jets and jets in general, sometimes, okay, so this is a, a pair of calipers if you aren't familiar. So 105 would be right about there, okay? And they don't give us a range? No range. Plus or minus. Wow. Well. Well, and it's measured from the leading edge of the wing back. And it looks like it's right about where that thing is. So I'm just gonna make a, a dot. Yes, I know it's kind of ugly, but ugly still gets the job done sometimes. 
I want it to stand out enough to be seen, but I don't want it to stand out enough to be ugly. Okay, that'll work. Now, I don't know if I want the mark on the top or the bottom, but if it's marked on the top like this, I have to flip the plane upside down. Or I can just grab like this and then kind of tell. Okay, so that's gonna favor toward tail heavy. That's generally, you don't wanna be super tail heavy on any plane on a Maiden. You wanna be somewhat less tail heavy than that. So that means we could put a bigger battery in here and potentially get that to set our gravity out which would be ideal. I'm gonna grab my 4S3200, which is a little bit bigger than they suggest, but if you're using smart packs, they tend to weigh in a little bit less mm -hmm. um, than their peers on weight. Not always, not trying to, to save horn here necessarily. I'm just kind of speaking from practical terms. My lady's counting down, do you hear? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll just undo this. I'm gonna center this right in here. I'm gonna have to go battery leads this way. Oh boy. Ooh, that's, gonna... that's gonna be tight. I think it's gonna go. I just think it's gonna be tight because it is wider back here. It's making me nervous. Can you put no. just a little bit of weight on there mm -hmm. so that doesn't fall? Now guys, if you're unfamiliar with loading batteries in jets, eh, that looks pretty good actually. It is one of the things that we've talked about on numerous occasions. If it's hard to load a battery in a plane, you're gonna be a lot more likely not to fly it. And I know it seems, you guys probably think that's a bunch of BS because you're like, Ryan, we don't all have 200 planes. Yes, I understand that. But I am saying, in fact, if you have a plane and it's hard to put a battery in, we've had a few planes that are terrible to put batteries mm -hmm. in. Like, case in point, free wing A10. Yep, Absolutely exactly terrible. Of. Even when Like, you, it's a half an hour commitment yep. to put a battery in that thing. Even when you didn't have a bunch of planes, you didn't fly that I one. I hated that. Just because, because of, that. of that. And you know what? If you didn't get it exactly right, you were screwed. You'd crash almost certainly. And it was just not a very forgiving plane, but it was really cool back in the day. And so much... So much better the E-Flight one has been. So much. And it's 6S. Which means it's got tons of power. More than one to one rate. Ratio. Power to weight ratio. Which I was hoping this one would be a little closer to that, but it's not. Maybe it doesn't need it though. Okay, now that is not going to go. Not even close. See? Oh. Without carving. Dang, I was hoping I could put that vertical. Because vertical is so much easier than trying to make it horizontal in this case because this battery is going to end up being too wide for the opening, I wonder. Do you have like a 27? I have a 2700 4S, I think. I know I have a 2700 3S, but I can get it in there. It's just awkward. Oh, man. Uh, no, it's, it's fine. It's you actually okay. It holds straps. it nicely. Yeah, you won't even need straps. That's true which might actually be better that way. So if I pull that, push this down, yeah, I think we might be okay. And so, by the way, guys, if you're wondering, we really do like the smart batteries. We've had super good luck with them, and I'm just like so busy um, with life that I don't have time to ever discharge batteries. I didn't discharge batteries before, and I destroyed most of them. Like every battery I have from before we started smart packs are ruined. Two okay. Man, I can't believe we couldn't get one more spline out of that stupid servo. Uh, it ticks me off. Not surprised. Look how clean that is now. Though. I know, it does look super nice though. Super nice. Perfect, goes on there without any problems. 2200 4S may end up just being the ticket for size though. Yeah. Remember, we're checking CG. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to basically put my fingers and thumbs right over each other. And now we are definitely nose heavy. Okay? So I'm going to pop this off and I'm just going to slowly move this battery back. I'm just looking for a place to hold on to and there's not really, so I have to hold right here. I can push that back. Very good thing we didn't put the receiver there. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked. Oh man, we're getting close. We're definitely nose heavy still. 
Look at this. Look yeah. how nice a fit this is going to end up being. Room to go. Oh, it's yeah. going to be like right on the first strap. 5%. 5%. Yep. Okay, guys. We're going to have to fiddle with the exact positioning of this pack. But to be honest, it's going to kind of be not necessarily specific to your plane because you might have a slightly different battery anyway. But I would say, oh, um, there we are. Yeah. Look where this thing is, guys. Perfect fit. Perfect detail. I want to get this in before the video ends. So guys, don't forget, we always have so much more coming here on Brian Phillips RC, but I got to show you this one last thing. I'm going to write down 3200, 3200, 4S, 30C, and the wires need to go this way. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. We're doing it on 34 or 3200, 4S, 30C pack, Gen 1 Smart Pack, and if you wanted to get a little extra value, bang for your buck, you can do the voltage alarm in there. Should fit, should still CG out perfect. Obviously with the NX8, we show how to do this. We don't necessarily show um, the other different options that are out there. See that? If mm. I drop that down, that might yep, be pretty nice because it's already squished. So guys, beautiful plane from XFly. Look at the difference in color on top and bottom. Amazing looking thing. I just can't wait to get this in the air, but of course there's like a trillion mile an hour winds out there and I refuse to crash a plane because I, I can't resist. Um, if the wind is blowing in every direction, not a good day for a maiden. If the wind was going down the runway, I would go out there and fly this right now and you know I would but I am not gonna give up on this beauty. It looks amazing. And having twin 50 millimeter EDFs is definitely within the realm of maybe we won't have a battery eater. And also just to be clear, they are twin 40 amp ESCs. So in case you were keeping score, the A10 from E-Flight has twin 40 amp ESCs, which we have already established, definitely do thrust reverse. So if we have trouble getting this thing down in a hurry, which we might not, and you still want wheels up, wheels down, then you might be able to do thrust reverse with 80 ESCs, especially given that we use the AR631, which will support controlling that. So really cool plane, guys, from XFly. Great job. If you haven't checked out the J65, I'm if you haven't seen the video on the J65, it's amazing. It's one of the best planes we have right now, and it was super well done by XFly. So obviously this SU, 27 is going to be sweet. We can't wait to share it with you. If you're not, if you're not aware of what was happening, our mics died and our camera died. So we're really sorry about that, guys. We try to maintain a really high quality level. And uh, in this case, when the batteries died, we don't always notice in time. So the last 15 minutes or so, my mic died, but Megan's mic was working. So our apologies in that regard. Uh, we think you can hear what you needed to hear. But at the end of the day, this thing's gonna be sweet. We hope it's as good as we think it's gonna be. Obviously, we haven't seen it fly yet because we film our unbox and then we have to fly it later. Even if you watch it maiden and then unbox, we still don't know. So it's gonna be awesome and we appreciate you guys being around. I just wanted to point out this J65 again because it was such a sweet plane and we have done a ton of planes and we love airliners here on Brian Phillips RC. We wish more of the companies would release more of them and it has been a staple of our um, whatever small piece of the pie of the YouTube that has helped lead to our success. So we are super appreciative uh, for airliners here on this channel because Supreme Hobbies helped to project us onto the stage and give us lots of opportunities, which is super cool. And obviously without you guys, we wouldn't have the channel. And so as long as you keep coming, we'll keep putting together content. So thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing. Don't forget to click the bell for notifications so you know when we're putting out content, which we're trying to do ground vehicles on Wednesday. We're trying to do something the front half of the week, aviation, and then something in the back half of the week. We got weekends reserved for uh, kind of like one-off projects like bikes and things that are a little bit off the wall for us. And we so hope, we hope that you guys are liking the new format and uh, trying to be super consistent with that. Obviously the J65 took up a little bit of extra time and that's the way we've been running that. So if you have a really big release, we might let it go into the beginning of the next week. So hopefully that works for you guys. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We do our best to keep current on comments. Um, we do see comments for our Patreons quick. That's one of the small details. We don't list it as a benefit because then people overseas have to pay a VAT tax mm -hmm. on any of the Patreon 
uh, gifts that they give. So we have specifically, and um, we have we, we calculated doing that. Okay, so if you're a Patreon and you're supporting us, we treat you the same if you give us $1 as if you give us $1,000 a month, um, which we're still waiting for the $1,000 a month, guys. <laughs> so if you're out there, please start right away. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys on Patreons. We have a great uh, group of really supportive people here, so special thanks to you guys. And then obviously the people that uh, are sending money on PayPal, it's much appreciated. It brightens our day when somebody sends us 20 bucks for no reason. It's just like super cool that you guys care about us that much. And obviously we love bringing you good content, so definitely stay tuned. We have so much going on, it's crazy, and we can't wait to share it with you. So come back for more here on Brian Phillips RC.